Hello, everybody. I think I'm almost ready to get started. Just checking one thing before we hop into things. So you might have noticed... Maybe not on the one that's on the chat screen. But there's a new command, chat. It has been added. <laughs> it was requested. It exists. Enjoy. But in any case, I guess we're going into episode two, where I don't think they're ever leaving Mia alone. <laughs> ever. Poor Mia. Rest in peace, Mia. So I have a very light spoiler as to what's ahead because I apparently have to talk to a re specific reoccurring character for it. I'm a ghost. There we go. I heard a little bit of I'm a ghost. There you go. Incredible, says the channel. So there you go. Whenever you, whenever Mia comes back, just exclamation mark ghoster, I guess. Yeah, it's very slightly boosted the volume. Hopefully chat enjoys. Let's go ahead and boot up the game. Pause the music. So yeah, I don't really know what this case is about. We didn't even really see the title of it very much. <clears throat> so we're going in blind. Phoenix blind, indeed. Minus one minor thing to make sure we do an optional thing for achievements. <laughs> I love the sound effect carrying over to the other screen when I swap it. Just in case you missed it before. The stolen turnabout. Okay. The time is 1 a.m. Beep, 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 chat. Oh no, beep, beep, beep. Play Mario Kart? What's going on? Detective, we made it! Phew! What a relief! Glad the jewel is still safe! Oh no, it's Gumshoe. <laughs> you said it, pal! Must have been our rock-solid security that scared him off! Would you mind opening the safe just to double-check? I feel like and then he just gets knocked out and they steal it from the safe. Is that where this is going? Why bother learning the password if an idiot will just open it up for you? Oh, already stolen. Ugh! We've been had! Oh no, not mask to mask. Up front, guards, turn on the searchlights! <laughs> Better luck next time, gentlemen! Oh boy, another performer. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm afraid I must be leaving now. That's that's what I wanted more of after the previous game. We shall meet again when the next moon is full. <laughs> okay. October 11th, 3:24 p.m. Brenton Company Law Offices. Hey, Nick. Get a load of this. Hey, are you listening to me? You can clean the toilet later. Why is she saying that when we're in the office? Do we have a bathroom literally in our office? How are we going to catch him on the moon? Who knows? <laughs> Send Mia. This is important. Uh, what are you freaking out about now? <laughs> Today will be the last time you talk to me that way. Huh? We're about to hit the big time. Big time? What do you mean by we? You don't mean you and me are. Huh, don't be silly. Talking about me and Pearly, of course. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> John, it just went for the... You, you can't just spring Pearl on me. It's, that's not fair. Hello, it's a pleasure to see you again, Mr. Nick. Pearls, you haven't changed a bit. Wait, what are you doing here anyway? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Mr. Nick? Here, take a look at this! What's this? Some kind of poster? Yeah, the forehead is here. 
Grain Village. Isn't that... That's right, it's our hometown. Currently in mine, that is. Love the I am jar. What's this about treasures from the boonies? Ha ha ha, very funny. You can laugh all you want, but you'll be singing another tune tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? The treasures are Korean exhibit doesn't actually start until next week, but... The promoter sent us some special VIP entry passes! That's why I dressed up extra special today. What do you think, Nick? Does she even look different at all? I don't think she does. Huh. Same Maya. Different day. This young lady here is Maya Fei. The younger sister of Mia Fei. My friend and mentor. First met her two years ago. I was working on the case surrounding Mia's death, and ever since then... I've been the one who's been keeping this law office afloat from behind the scenes. Actually, that's just a cover for her true identity. In reality, she's a spirit medium. And a bit of a shady character. Hey, who are you calling shady? And this little girl is Pearl Fay. They usually call her Pearls. She's Maya's cousin and a spirit medium in training herself. I know I'm a bit young, but I would help in any way I can, Mr. Nick. Oh, don't remind me of this place more. Crane Village is the home of the mysterious Crane channeling technique. And Maya here is the daughter of the Crane School of Channeling's master. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's no joke. No, it is a joke, and it is ridiculous. I've seen her power with my own eyes. It's the real thing, all right. Earth to Nick! How long are you going to make two gorgeous women like us wait? Yeah, Mr. Nick, I can't wait any longer. I want to see the exhibit. Uh, looks like I don't get a choice here. Might as well as head on out. Treasures exhibit poster, poster for Treasures of Crane exhibit added to the court record. October 11th, 7, 18 p.m. Lordly Taylor. Lordly Taylor? Main exhibit hall. Lordly Taylor. The city's fanciest and most expensive department store. Oh, okay. I, I guess this is a play on Lord and Taylor. Treasure exhibit, huh? I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. Wow. This is awesome. Yeah. You make even the cheapest junk look great. Damn, he just burned them all. Well, depends on how you display it. Oh, they even have the dusty old hanging scroll that was in the Fame Manor storeroom. Oh, I don't want to be reminded of this case, please. Please, no more chat. <laughs> I thought we were done with this, but apparently not. I'm so sad. The despair is real, chat. Oh yeah, I remember scribbling on it when I was a little girl. Hello, painful memories, pretty much. On a family heirloom? Say, Nick, the person in charge of this ex exhibition is waiting for us in the basement warehouse. Please let them be kidnapped and never returned. All right. Guess we should go and say hello. I guess I can examine some things. I think I remember this old folding screen here. Oh, yes, I remember. It was when there was a bullet hole six inches from the floor, and we were too stupid to recognize that that was evidence if you did it too early. Pretty sure it was an important piece of evidence. What do you mean you're pretty sure? In that murder case that happened in the Crane Village. This folding screen is the greatest of all the spirit channeling techniques. The Six Leaf Crane Sacred Writings Folding Screen. If it's so secret, why is it the most prominent thing in the exhibit? They're just a bunch of old urns. Are these really treasures too? Of course they are. This is a treasure exhibit, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess so. So, all it takes to be a treasure is age. No wonder nobody likes museums. Man, Phoenix, you are just so unlikable. Anyway, let's go here. Oh, Mystic Maya, look! I can't believe it! Ah, uh, it's so cute! It's a little diorama of Korean Village. Yeah, look at that. But somehow, it seems to reek of dreariness. Wow, he's certainly the, the, the wet towel, I think the expression is, of the party. 
Just oof. Oh, Mystic Maya, it's your house. It even says Faye Mirror on it. Burn it, burn the house. <laughs> Yikes, you're right. I kinda wanna add the famous in front of it. Don't do it, Maya. They might get mad. Anything else to explore? Piece of cloth with a ton of finely written characters jammed onto it. Probably esoteric knowledge only, only mediums would know. Hmm, let's see. Is it gonna be about like sales discounts or something stupid? Here's the title in English. 108 ways to save money. Oh, the yeah, uh, this was in the previous game. Actually, never mind. That's not a prediction. I'm pretty sure this was literally in the previous game. Pretty sure the number has gone up since the last time I saw it. Yeah, I think it has too. Well, we're always looking for new ways, you know. Being a medium sounds like a rough way of life. Okay, I remembered the joke from last game. There we go. Memory, memory check. What's with this big cushion? Just lying around with nothing on it. Hmm. Well, it must be for the greatest treasure of all. Greatest treasure? Is there something like that? Huh? Why, of course there is. Right, Pearly? Oh, uh, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll bet it would really take your breath away. Let it be chloroform. <laughs> Let's move, I guess, the basement warehouse. I just like the sign that says "Burr." October 11, Lordly Taylor, basement warehouse. Yep, this is a basement warehouse, all right. This place is scary. I feel like a monster could jump out at any time. It's probably gonna be Gumshoe or some creepy person that will be our defendant at some point. Don't be scared, Pearly. I'll protect you. Oh, Mr. Wright. Ah! A monster! You were right! Huh? A monster? Oh. Oh, that's, uh, Adrian Andrews, I think? I didn't think they would want to return any characters from the second game, but here we are, I guess. You! I know you! <laughs> nice to see you again, too, little miss. Oh, uh, hello! Is she a friend of yours, Nick? And how do you know her, Pearly? Nice to meet you. I'm Adrian Andrews. There we go. That's a that's a two-time memory check. I'm in charge of the promotion and planning for this treasure exhibit. You know, she's surprisingly normal compared to the other characters that could potentially be here. I'm also responsible for the security arrangements. Or as we'd like to say, oops. <laughs> Oh, um, nice to meet you. Adrian sure has changed since we last met. Yeah, her outfit's different. So this is the warehouse. The really valuable exhibit items are stored away in here. Okay. But, can, but what do you think of my badge? I owe a great deal of thanks to that badge. Do you? Do you? Are you sure? Hmm. Hmm. It's the only reason that I'm still here today. Is it? Oh, come on now. That's not true. Even Phoenix knows. I think what Nick means to say is, it wasn't thanks to the badge, it was thanks to me. Tell the truth, Nick. I know that's what you were thinking. Indeed, it is magical glasses, woman. No way, Maya. Can I just present this without any prompts? What even happens if I do this? Um, so what about this? Oh, never mind. Can I present the poster? I wanted to do something nice for you and your friends, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I feel like we're about to be murdered. So that's why you arranged this exhibit? I knew that Karain Village was the hometown of your assistant, Maya. I thought it would be great to let the rest of the world know about it, too. Yeah, that's it. Reveal it to the world, have it scrutinized, have it totally destroyed by visitors. Perfect. Hmm. But that's not exactly thanking me, per se, is it? Maybe. Who don't want to see an exhibit on the treasures of Phoenix Wright? Damn, we got burned. Guess I can't argue with that one. Oh, actually, there's one more thing that is 
I probably missed one somewhere, but throughout the entire trilogy, anytime you see a ladder, there is a, an achievement for finding every ladder-related conversation, so I might as well check this first. Look, a ladder! That's a step ladder. So, what's the difference? You need to stop judging things based on narrow-minded cultural assumptions, Nick. Right, sorry. Why don't we feel like we've had the same exact conversation before somewhere? It's because you copy-pasted from the other games. Let's look at the burr sign. Looks like part of a big signboard, but all I can read on it is the burr. Aha! Uh -huh, I've got it! Maybe he's supposed to say hamburger! Why would anyone write hamburger that big? Like, maybe for the World Hamburger Festival, or something. I kinda doubt it. Aha! Uh -huh, I've got it! Maybe it said spaghetti! What? Why are you talking about food? Oh, wait, that's normal for you. Anyway, it says burr. There's no way it could be spaghetti. Is that going to be a plot point later? That it, like, flips and it looks like another word? Is this a hint for something? Like, are we going to get something in a mirror and the word is different? I feel like this is a weird thing to bring up in correlation to this. Well, maybe it was a typo. It might have said Spaghetti Festival. What do you think? Okay to me. Besides, spaghetti's the only thing more tangled than your reasoning. Damn, Phoenix with the burn. He had enough, chat. This computer. Looks like it's hooked up to the security camera above. Oh no. Oh no. I think I just realized where one of the cameo characters is going to come in. This is reminding me of the first game specifically with the computer when they were in the, uh, what's it called? The, the movie studio involving a very specific character that was very annoying. <laughs> so I guess that's coming soon, sooner than I anticipated. And that, and that means what? The camera is set up to take a photo of anyone that goes in or out of the storeroom. Then the data from the camera gets uploaded to, to this computer here. That's what. I see. It's a pretty high tech stuff. Oh boy. It's a security camera. Trained on the warehouse door. It sure would be a shame if somehow somebody was somehow wearing a costume and we confused who it was for like the third time. That certainly doesn't get tiresome. I really hope they don't do that later in this trial, by the way. It's set up to take a picture of anyone that enters or exits the door. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, they say. Mm hmm. So we're setting up that there's going to be like two mysterious photos. We're going to have one where we don't understand why it took a photo. And then we'll have a photo where the photo doesn't really mean what it shows. I I'm guessing that's where they're going with this. So they they've now established that this is probably what's going to happen. Pearl says, Mr. Nick, what's that big door doing over there? Looks like it's the door to the actual storeroom. See lots of big boxes and stuff back there. Really? Let's go in. I want to take a look. Oh, I'm sorry. Unauthorized personnel aren't allowed in there. Did you hear that, Nick? We're unauthorized personnel. Why are you telling me that? Hmm. Object that looks like it could be removed later. Mystic Maya, take a look next to the door. That, that's Mystic Ami, right? Okay, the I am jar. Yes, that's a statue of the woman who invented the crane channeling technique, Ami Fey. The statue is on loan from one of the training halls of the Fey branch family. In fact, it just arrived this morning. Ami Fey's golden statue added to the court record. Okay, so it's important we look that up. What's that creepy looking thing she's holding? Oh, it said Shishiso or something briefly, right? Oh, there we go. It is holding the Shishits. I don't know how to say that. But we picked it up in PSO. That I know is true. We definitely picked this up in PSO as a item from episode 4. It's a creepy looking thing she's holding. Don't ask me. How should I know? Well, it's a Shishitsu or however you say it. Well, you are the future master, right? Maybe so, but this is the first time I've ever seen this statue. That thing is the crane Shishitsu. 
Chishishido? Chishishido, maybe. It's a ceremonial sword. I was gonna say, I remember that sword shape from, like, Samurai Warriors for, uh, Kenshin. <laughs> It's not a real weapon, so the blade isn't sharp. You say that now, right, chat? You said it now. Aw, oh, phooey. I wanted to cut something. I'm sorry, what? What are you eyeing me for? Like how there's like Organi? Or maybe it's supposed to be organic? It says Organi. No, it doesn't, Nick. It says Organize. You just can't see the last two letters. Oh. Yeah, well, I guess no one else could read it either. This place is a mess. Yeah, you must feel right at home, huh? Okay. Anything else worth investigating? So we have a bunch of paint cans, which may or may not be a red herring. We have a locked door. I think I investigated everything. So let's present a statue to her and see if she has anything new to say about it. Nope. Okay, so let's go talk about Adrian Andrews. To Adrian Andrews. It really has been a long time, hasn't it, Mr. Wright? Nick, what's going on? Who is this woman? Why are you freaking out on me? What? I just thought it'd be more dramatic if I got all worked up. That's all. Ugh, it's character chat. Miss Sigmaya, you shouldn't let him off the hook so easily. Please, Maya, don't say anything that'll needle pearls further. Mr. Wright was there for me when I really needed help. Were we? <laughs> I'm like, didn't we get her arrested? Um, question mark? We were not defending her at any point, technically. It, it was something that happened seven months ago. You remember, don't you? The Nickel Samurai case. Not really. I was stuck in a dark wine cellar. Did that escape your memory, Nick? Ugh, that case. After that, I quit being a manager and started this job. Wow, that's tough. I'm sorry, Miss Andrews. It wasn't for us. Wait, she didn't str Wait, hold on. She didn't serve jail time for all that ridiculousness? Wait. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Wait, no, 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 no. No, no, no. She set up that whole scene and tried to frame somebody for murder and she didn't go to jail? What? No, this is the real plot twist. Okay. This legal system sucks, chat. Like, oh, yeah, you only kind of framed him for murder. <laughs> but you got caught, so shame on you. Guess you shouldn't work there anymore. That was the repercussion? Okay. No, don't say that. I'm glad the whole thing happened. Are you? Thanks to you and everyone else that was involved, I was able to change my whole life. Yeah, they should have changed you into an orange jumpsuit and sent you to jail, but anyway. Sus indeed, says Dango. I really am grateful. I feel like she's saying this before the murder. I'm just saying, chat. She has, like, very barely any reason to like us. We've done nothing but purposely get in her way of revenge. And then we exposed pretty much her darkest secret in front of everyone in court. And then we basically embarrassed her in front of the uh, attendees. Honestly, we don't really... She doesn't really have a reason to like us, to be honest with you. Aside from, I guess we got the other guy in jail. Well, actually, no. Technically, he was let off, too. Honestly, I'm not really sure, chat. I'm not really sure why she likes us based off the previous game. Phew, that's a relief, apparently. Also, why is there no music here? Oh no, we accused her. We straight up drug we straight up made her go forward. We destroyed her in examination. Then we basically spilled her whole relationship about in regards to the suicide note. And then her whole plan got unraveled because the person she wanted to have found guilty was let off. So if anything, she should be really pissed off at us. I'm really impressed, Miss Andrews. Handling a huge exhibition like this must be very tiring. 
Well, Lordly Taylor is celebrating their 200th anniversary this year. The works on display in the main ex exhibition hall are worthy of the finest museums. Woohoo! Did you hear that, Pearly? The finest museums! Yes, I did! That's really wonderful! So, this basement warehouse is pretty well protected, huh? Of course it is. After all, there are some priceless treasures here. The security guards are all very highly trained as well. So even if I had not looked up something that will happen at some point in this case, unfortunately, I think I know who one of the security guards is. That sounds good. So what is with that face she's making? Oh, look, it's already eight o'clock. Have you all eaten yet? Um, well, actually, I've already made a reservation at the restaurant on the 12th floor. Why don't we all dine together? Oh, oh, now the music returns. Oh, I like the sound of that, dine. It sounds so fancy. I have the kids lunch. Haha, <laughs> pearly, it's dinner, not lunch. Why don't you go for it and really eat your fill with the kids dinner? Okay, in that case, one kids dinner for me. <laughs> Shall we head upstairs then? After that pleasant evening, all that remained was to wait for the exhibition's opening. It was wonderful seeing Miss Andrews looking so happy. Unlike the time we crushed her in front of court, man, that was brutal. None of us could have imagined that the very next day something terrible would happen. I mean, I would. It's Phoenix, right? But whatever. We bring disaster to everybody. We might as well as be like a cursed luck statue or something. October 12th, 10.09 a.m. Right in company law offices. Yeah, pretty much. Haha, my child is pretty accurate. N Nick, this is terrible. What the? You're cleaning the toilet again? Never knew you were such a toilet freak. Give me a break, would you? Or just hit the snooze button for the fifth time. Um, I'm going to turn on the TV. We've gotten an update on the recent treasure heist. Based on clues found at the scene of the crime, authorities have announced that they believed it was the work of the renowned phantom thief, Mask to Mask. That is a design. Mask the Mask. According to a spokesperson, Lordly Taylor received a threat letter some days ago. This is the fifth heist by this phantom thief who only targets rare treasures. Lordly Taylor. Well, Nick, what are you gonna do? Don't you dare go back to scrubbing the toilet. Treasure. Lordly Taylor. You don't think. Don't worry, Phoenix, she doesn't think. Yes, now get up, Nick. It was stolen by Master Mask. Our most valuable treasure. The Korean sacred urn was stolen. What? Guess we'll ask about the sacred urn. Fresh my memory a little. What's the sacred urn? It's only the most important treasure in Korean village, that's all. Look, it's right there on this poster. Don't you remember what's inside? The urn contains a very important soul that we definitely didn't accidentally release by breaking it. Namely, the soul of Mystic Ami Fei, the founder of the crane channeling technique. Okay, so Mia's been dead for two years, according to this. Maya's now 19. Earl is now 9. Adrian's 24. Phoenix is 26. It's my third year as a young but skilled lawyer. I don't think so. Exactly. I am indeed. Right, Pearly? Oh, yes. Th that's right. Hold up. I thought that urn had the name Ami written on it, but now it says I am. Hmm. Any idea how that happened, Pearly? 
Huh? Oh my... well... Tee <laughs> there are some things best left unsolved, wouldn't you say, Mr. Nick? That's right. One year ago, there was a murder in Crane Village, Maya's hometown. The Sacred Urn turned out to be an important clue in that case. Sacred Urn, one of the treasures of Crane Village, supposedly priceless, it looks like a plain old pot. Added to court record, what to do. Okay, the toilet is shinier than the judge's head. So let's see what's next. What's wrong with you, Nick? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do you... Mr. Nick, your beloved Mystic Maya's treasure has been stolen. Does that even bother you? But I thought the urn was the village's treasure. So I don't see how... The village is Mystic Maya. She's the future master of the Korean School of Channeling. You know what I'm talking about, Mr. Nick. I won't let you say you don't. Okay, okay, I do. So what am I supposed to do about it? Isn't it obvious? Go and find the bad guy who did this. Yeah, and get the sacred urn back. But I'm not a detective. I'm a lawyer. That has nothing to do with this. If you're a real gentleman, you would find it for your beloved Mystic Maya. Man, oh man. There's no winning against Pearl's fairy tale image of love. What's the name of this bad guy again? Mask to Mask, Nick. Make a note of it. Mask to Mask. Last year's incident. Oh, I was terrible. I was arrested and everything. Previously on Phoenix Wright. One year ago, the murder in Crane Village. And was killed during one of Maya's spirit channelings. And this urn wound up being the key piece of evidence that proved her innocence. Um, Mr. Nick? Do you mind not telling Mystic Maya about that? You promised, remember? You said you wouldn't tell anyone I broke the urn. Oh yeah, that's right. Now I remember. Cern used to say Ami on it. Until Pearl's accidentally broke it into a million pieces. She tried to secretly fix it. Let's just say it didn't work out so well. Sorry, I'm not so good at arts and crafts. Spelling either. Anyway, this is how her gluing project turned out. She put the pieces together wrong and now instead of Ami, it says I am. Can't believe no one's noticed this until now, a whole year later. Honestly, her village is pretty dumb. I could kind of see it. I can't believe it myself. Hi. I'm gonna present my badge. So, what do you think about this? Hmm, what about it, Pearly? I'm not certain. What do you think, Mr. Nick? Maybe three heads aren't better than one. Guess I can examine the poster to see if anything new is here. Old movie post, apparently this is the first movie that made me a cry when she saw it a long time ago. I watched it recently and she cried all night long too. Which I guess is why it's back up on the wall. You check it out one of these days. And they never mention the movie. Charlie. Quite decorative plant. When she was alive, Mia really loved it. She went so far as to make it our mascot. Must be nice to be a plant. Being able to just sit in the sun and photosynthesize. Hey, Nick, no time for daydreaming. That's right, Mr. Nick, no time for daydreaming. Oh, man. I want to find out that urn. They're not going to give me a second apiece. There's a giant building just outside the window. It's the Gateway Hotel, high-class luxury hotel. Chain is getting so rich that they bought a whole chunk of the next town over. Started building a huge theme park. It's going to be called Gatewaterland. I think that two years ago, it was just a little hotel for businessmen. I guess that's alluding to something in the future. Difficult looking legal books stand in formidable row. They mock me. Actually, I've neglected them for so long they're covered in a layer of dust. You should actually try reading them once in a while. Hey Nick, this is no time for reading. Yes, Mr. Nick, you can always read later. Guess I won't be getting any peace and quiet to even read until I find that urn. 
my desk. I don't get to use it much, so the dust bunnies are starting to mount their assault. Maybe we should wipe them out with a few well-placed swipes of my cleaning rag. Hey, Nick, are you trying to make me upset? Yeah, Mr. Nick. If you're worried about the cleaning, please leave it to me. These pearls is good at cleaning. Ugh. Guess I better go find that urn. Back to the exhibition hall. October 12, Lordly Taylor, Main Exhibition Hall. Right. Let's see if we can find some clues that might lead us to the bad guy. But it doesn't look like anything has been disturbed. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same as it did last night. <sighs> hmm. Bad guy, huh? Hey, you can't just poke around here, pal. Wait a minute, that voice. Oh no, not him again. I mean, who knows what his job position is now. Fired, demoted, patrolman, investigator. This is a big question mark. It's you. And I'm the one who should be saying not again. Why is it every time something bad happens? You always show up, pal. Should be asking you that. Aren't there any other detectives? No, I should be asking you that. What what are you doing hanging around here? Hey, I asked you first. Why are you here? Any Alright, alright, we got it. Why don't you two just kiss up and make oh kiss and make up already? I'm hello. It's been a long time, Mr. Scruffy Detective. Oh, it's you, little missy. Um, uh... Actually, my name is Gumshoe. Detective Dick Gumshoe. That was a good chance for you to try to remember it right. If it's too long for you, you just call him Dick. Okay, it's good to see you again, Mr. Detective Dick. Um, yeah. Good to see you too again. Too, I guess ask what happened. Um, Mr. Detective Dick, can you tell us about what happened? Oh, you're trying to remember my name, Add a girl. Um, just it's Gumshoe, okay? Anyway, the thief stole something called the Sacred Urn. I know about that. Oh, well, the criminal's name is Mask to Mask. I know about that, too. Detective, can you tell us something other than that? Well, I guess I sort of owe you guys, in a way. The crime occurred last night at around 1.30 in the morning. How exactly do you know that? We got an emergency call from the guard at the scene of the crime, pal. He said the urn was just stolen. Scene of the crime? You mean here, right? Wrong. That urn was being kept under a careful guard in the basement warehouse. Basement warehouse, huh? Um, so who was guarding the basement warehouse? That guy. It's all his fault the thief got away, pal. Sells one case and gets a swell head. Think of that, he's an ace detective. Ace detective? Oh, a new character? Hey, Detective Gumshoe. About this mask to mask. Unless it's that annoying horn guy. That would be kind of annoying. I hope it's not him. Is he famous? What? You're joking, right, Nick? Master Mask is the hottest thing since sliced bread. Sometimes he appears as a museum guard. Sometimes he appears as a big brown bear known to surprise unsuspecting victims. Big brown bear? What? But underneath those disguises is the true Mask to Mask. So he's some kind of master of disguise, huh? He only goes after the finest works of art, pal. Last night was his fifth heist. Lordly Taylor had only cooperated. Could have caught him this time. Really? And he allegedly stole the urn? Okay. What? Then you knew he was planning on stealing the sacred urn? Of course I did. I always send his calling card before he steals something. Calling card, huh? Mention that on TV. 
ace detective. So why do you call him an ace detective anyway? That's what he calls himself, pal. I didn't make it up. So, what's he like? Well, like I told you, Master Mass has made five heists so far. On the fourth heist, Mr. Ace Detective managed to get the stolen treasure back. Wow, that is impressive. All by himself? Yeah. Gotta admit it, pal. Maybe he really is as good as he says. Every time the thief sends one of his calling cards, send our men on a stakeout. But none of us have ever gotten so much as a glimpse of the guy. The Mr. S detective was able to retrieve the stolen treasure from the thief. Hmm. Anyway, he's at the scene of the crime right now looking for clues. So he's down in the basement warehouse, huh? Calling card. Hmm. So what's this calling card? Here it is. But don't show it to anyone. It's top secret, okay, pal? What's this mark on the front? That's Master Mass secret signature emblem, pal. It's Ace's mark. All of his calling cards have got them. They didn't mention that on the news flash. We're withholding that detail from the public for operational reasons. Hmm. The only thing we could tell if a calling card is real or not is by this emblem. Hmm. That makes sense. They get famous, they're always imitators. Mr. Nick, if you work a little harder, maybe you can have your own copycat someday. Oof. Hmm. Oh, um, thanks, I... Oh, excuse me. Oh, um, thanks, I guess. Okay, so... Let's deconstruct everything that it just told me. So, that conversation is trying to set something up for the future. So, what do I think this is foreshadowing? I think it's foreshadowing the talk of copycats. There's going to be two thieves. The suspicion that no one has... He somehow solves things that other people are not sure of. It means there's like an 80% chance the detective is actually the thief. But probably not the original thief, because why would he steal the urn? So if we go in with the concept that there's more than one thief, we could probably isolate at some point during either the previous heist or one of the ones before that. The original thief just took what they wanted, and since then he's had a copycat. So that was my takeaway from that conversation. I don't know if they meant to hint that hard, <laughs> but like... I'm immediately queued in on it. I want you to know, chat. Like, I'm immediately queued in on this. So, I do not trust this other detective we're about to talk to, inevitably. So there is a pretty high chance that this person was the thief. Well, there's the bent sword. October 12th, Lordly Taylor, basement warehouse. No matter how many times we come here, this place always gives me the chills. That's probably because it's air conditioned. Protect the art pieces, you know. I think where we'll start to see it is that potentially he would be the most likely person to also duplicate it, since if the details were not released to the public, yet the calling card looks very similar, then that would mean that it would be somebody that originally investigated it. So it's kind of like a closed loop scenario. So I don't have to really, really worry about somebody unrelated to the previous cases coming in, since the calling card is going to be the thing that's probably going to get him caught up. But we'll see. Welcome to my private little banquet of chaos. 
Huh? What the heck does that mean? Oh, that is... That is a character. So instead of a monocle, he's got a magnifying glass. He has a ludicrous bow tie. Ribbon? More ribbon. A massive ring. He's giving me very sin- He's giving me kind of like a sinister penguin vibe. Even this character looks so evil. Well, I hope they don't think this is subtle because I'm now like 95% convinced that this guy did it. We haven't even learned his name yet. Like, this is so bad. Just look at him. Like, look at how sinister he looks. He's got the pointy nose, the, the kind of creepy smile. I feel like that must be really uncomfortable to keep on your face. Anyway. Uh, um, who are you anyway? Shh, silence! Oh, ew. Ew, no, don't show me the eyeball up close. <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. Please don't do that. That's, I don't like that. What do you see? Safari. The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium. Neither very advanced at their trade. Am I wrong? Yikes. That's scary. How did you know that? Well, is it the fact that you're wearing a stupid spirit channeling costume and Phoenix is an absolute idiot that probably everybody trash talks at the station? I don't think this is... I don't think this is really detective skills. I think this is common sense. How, you say? The Universal Skeptic would say no, or say that how is nothing but a question of why. I am a traveler of both time and space, and a swimmer of dreams. Oh, please tell me he gets arrested at the end of this. What is he talking about? I can't make heads or tails of it. Without further ado, let me fulfill what should be the very first duty of any gentleman. And introduce myself. My name is Atme. Luke Atme. I can't stop looking at you. You're pretty... Awful. Ace Detective! Oh. Um. Hi. Don't let him intimidate you, Nick. Stand up and show him what you're made of. Oh, not really intimidated. Okay. Um. The name's right. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. I'm Maya Fey. Oh, excuse me. I'm Maya Fey. Ace Spirit Medium. And I'm, um, Pearl Fay. I'm Mystic Bias Cousin and, uh, Spirit Medium Ace Apprentice. Drum roll, indeed. Excellent. Well then, shall we begin our little game? Game? Why does the phrase one short of a baker's dozen come to mind with this guy? Anyway, I'm gonna examine the sword and the pain. Just, they're loyal. Lawyer, please refr refrain from such crude behavior. Huh? What do you mean? This criminal is an artist. The crime scene is the canvas which he, uh, upon which he paints. Ew, stop doing that. You're reminding me of the very unlikable uh, Dr. Hottie with the zoom-ins. This is not a very flattering feature. Only I, Ace Detective at me, have an eye which is educated enough to read the signs. Or, you know, tell them how you did it, because you probably did it. Could you translate that for me, Nick? I think you pretty much said, don't touch anything, amateurs. If there's anything you wish to know about me, about... Excuse me, let's try this again. If there's something you wish to know about, you have but to ask at me. I know everything there is to know about my rival, Mask the Mask. What do I do now? Does he have any top secret information? Stuff that only a real crime buff would know? Think about what to ask while I listen to what Mr. Ace Detective has to say. Oh, oops. Did not mean to press that again. So the statue got moved. The paint is there. I'm assuming this is paint and not blood, because there are games that censor blood as pink for clarity. If you're wondering why I'm confused about this, this is very common, especially in modern games. I'm assuming this is literally meant to be paint. Based off that box. 
Uh, so we can't search anything yet. So they moved the statue. Pain and or blood is there, which came from a box. The sword is Ben. So did someone actually get killed? That's guy's detective. Um, are you really as famous as you say? Of course! For a lawyer, you have a rather shocking lack of knowledge about the world. Wow, that is just an evil smug face. Real subtle there with your villain design, uh, Phoenix Wright. I had no idea anyone was left in this world that had not heard of me. Look at me! No, look at me. I am Mestimas Arch Enemy! These detectives look at me! At this moment, there are two mighty figures which loom large over this grand city. One embodies the nefarious forces of darkness, the other the angelic cherubs of light. Boy, now I'm really lost. What is he saying, Nick? I've been personally on the heels of this villain since his first crime. After learning this criminal's patterns, he ordered his very latest loathsome larceny. I've been returned the target of his tyranny, the portrait of Magina to the crime scene. I did it all by myself. Took it back from Mask to Mask. My brawny mind and brilliant muscles. Um, do you mean that in reverse? Yeah, they mentioned it on the news. The great people around town segment. They said the museum gave you an incredible jewel as a reward. Hmm. Well, we're establishing motive already. <laughs> Well, compared to the treasure that I retrieved for them, it's not much. So, in the end, the only thing that makes you great is your own self-praise. Master Mask. Oh, tell us what you know about Master Mask. Keep it simple, please. Like about what have I... Oh, excuse me. Like about how I have devoted my life to thwarting his dastardly deeds. Yeah, the more he talks, the more I think he's a big fraud. Last night, here in the bowels of the store, we're locked in a most glorious battle. I see. Huh? Hang on a second. You were here last night? Here? In Lordly Taylor? Naturally. Wherever Matt Damas goes, he'll find his at me laying his elegant traps. Elegant traps? I like Damask out elegance to you and made a beautiful getaway. But this time, I allowed him to escape with the illusion of victory. I wonder if I should ask him about what happened last night in more detail. I don't want to, but you're probably going to force me to. The night of the crime. Um, can you tell us what exactly happened here last night? But of course! After all, I always say there should be no secrets between aces. Flattery will get you nowhere, Pinocchio. I first received a request for my services 20 days ago. It was 10 days ago that we received Master Mask calling card. Huh? You were hired before the calling card even arrived? Yes. You see, the person who hired me is quite rigorous and thorough. That's Adrian Andrew for you. A mere 10 days after hiring me, her worst premonitions were realized. Calling card arrived, right? Yes. The waste detective that I am set a trap for the thief right in the warehouse and waited for him alone. Alone? But why? Why didn't you go to the police for help? Well, then you would get captured. Ridiculous! Why would I seek help from such a singularly useless group of nincompoops? To be fair, they are pretty incompetent. Had a lot of nerve. After all, it was you that let Damask get away. I always operate alone and concealed, out of the sight of others. Horn sealed? Precisely. Even the guards on duty here were unaware of my presence. To fool 
fool your enemies, first you must fool your friends. It's my own original proverb. Anyway, back to what happened last night. Hmm. As I was saying, hid here in the warehouse and waiting for the thief to arrive. I swear to you, not a solitary soul came through that entrance. Hmm. Nevertheless, the sacred urn disappeared. Oh no, what a shock, chat. That's impossible. How could it just disappear? I was going to say, what's bothering me, chat, is... I, I'm not sure if he's quoting Sun Tzu or not. <laughs> I've been thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, I don't remember. It's been too long since I, I went through Sun Tzu. I feel like that's who he's quoting, if I had to guess who he's actually supposed to be quoting there. But that's impossible. How could it just disappear? How, you ask? Don't be ridiculous, Sir Lawyer. If I knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't be here. Not I am Ern, yeah, exactly. For someone who seriously messed up his own stakeout, he's rather full of himself. So, you're saying that even though one came through those... Oh. Wait, hold on. That is a typo. Wait a minute. I was wondering why I was confused. Let me correct the sentence to what it should say. So you're saying that even though no one came through those doors last night, our precious urn still somehow vanished from under your nose? There we go. That was going to bother me, chat. She said on for some reason. That, that's just not possible. Um, I have to present, actually, I present my badge to him. I'm sorry I can't be more helpful. I have no interest save of finding evidence against my arch rival. Nah, it's okay. I think it's just a bit of a piddling evidence hog. That's his defense style. Piddling evidence hog. W what? Piddling evidence hog, you say? In that case, I'd simply be wasting my breath. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks, Maya. Why couldn't you have just said I was a rival and not a piddling evidence hog? What a weird phrase. Anyway, I guess we should probably present this after I check it. To the security at Lordly Taylor, I will be coming to purloin the most priceless work of art on display in the Treasures of Crane exhibit. Take good care of the speckled urn, won't you? Yours truly, Mask to Mask. Yeah, that's suspicious. Let's go ahead and present this. Mask to Mask calling card. It's got its emblem printed on it, right? Quite impressive! But I would expect nothing less from my arch rival. Hmm. So far, I haven't seen who I think the real Mask to Mask is. Because there's no. I, I, as I said before, I feel like this guy probably came along. I don't know if it's in like the fourth case and then he gave up because he got everything or maybe as soon as the first one we haven't really learned enough about those other cases to make a firm statement but I, I'm fairly convinced he did the crime but he's not the original because otherwise why would they bring up the copycat conversation earlier I'm surprised to see you in possession of such top secret piece of information well, we've got an ace lawyer, an ace spirit medium, and an ace cousin apprentice here. Welcome, Chris, to mass distant relative to, to killer. You might be excited, Chris. There's a new command available. Yes, indeed. I think I could learn to like you, my fellow ace professionals. I don't know if I really want this guy to like us. Ever. Well, sir lawyer. I've been told that you're too... And you too are pursuing the mysterious thief. Well, I'm not sure I would say that exact. That's right. We're going to find the secret urn no matter what we have to do. Excellent. 
I will trust you. I permit you to take a look around while I investigate elsewhere. If perchance you should discover something of value, return then to my office. I'm a ghost. Indeed, he's a ghost. My office of earthly delights. The Admi Detective Agency. Officer, oh, office of earthly delights? Well then, sir lawyer, if you'll excuse me, I have much to do. Wait a minute. <laughs> Every t I can't unhear this is a jail. Every time I see, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that means with earthly delights other than very suspicious. He's gone. I don't like the idea of doing this guy's work for him. It's almost like he's a fraud. Come on, Nick. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. What do you mean it's no big deal? We're not a detective. Fire him. Fire him. Fire him. Let's hurry up and investigate before he changes his mind. I want to go to his office, too. Take me with you, okay? That pathetic-looking wooden box. Ah! That's the box that had the secret urn in it. Sign in the back, go burr, exactly. Don't touch it. There may be clues to the thief's identity on there. Uh, it's so hard to make that box. Huh? You made that poor excuse for a box, Maya. What's that supposed to mean? Our urn, urn has always been in, on its stand in the winding way of Faye Manor. So there's no box suitable for it, Mr. Nick. And I, I was so proud of it. Poor Maya. Maybe it'd have been better if Master Mass had taken the box too. Damn. Oh. All I can read is Burr. My bad. I was like Purdue Conversations. I jumped ahead of myself. Hey, Pearly, do you know what this is? It's a computer. A computer? Oh, I've heard of those. It is such a cute name. Looks like this computer is for storing the data from the security camera. Someone comes in or out of the warehouse. The camera takes a photo of them. It's probably the trap the detective set up. Let's see if we can find the last night's data on this thing. And even find a photo of Master Mask. Hmm. Let's see here. Man, I really stink at working these things. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? I'm sweating an awful lot. I don't know how to pull up the photos. I had no idea you were so pathetic with high-tech stuff, Nick. Yeah, well, I managed to print out the camera data anyway. Guess you have to learn to crawl before you can walk, right, Nick? Yeah, sure. Anyway, looks like the camera only went off once last night. Oh, only once? Not twice? Okay, so it's ch changed my expectation a little bit, I guess. What year is this set in again? That computer looks ancient. I have no idea. Listen. They tried to modernize the story, I think, in the early ones. But secretly, the story is, like, early 90s. So it's, like... I, I don't know what relative era of time this is supposed to take place in. Other than allegedly after all the smartphone stuff that we had earlier. So it kind of clashes a bit. Camera data. The warehouse camera went off around 1 a.m. around the on the night of the crime. Added to the court record. It's a security camera. Train on the big door to the storeroom. Set up to take a photo of anyone that goes in or out. A security camera? Yeah, go and stand in front of the door and I'll snap your photo too, Pearly. Um, Mystic Maya, do you think I should smile? Nah, it's for criminals, so I think you should make a really scary face. Like this? Uh, like this? Let's look at the bent sword. Wow, this is awesome. What did Miss Andrew say it was called again? Shichishido. It's literally seven branch. That's what it stood for. Seven branch sword. Okay. I was going to say, I think I saw the translated name. Not the, what it was originally called. It's literally seven branch sword in Japanese. Or so Miss Andrews. Or so says Miss Andrews. No, for all the trick, she's trying to steal your soul. That's true. Whoa, it's pretty heavy. One hit, seven times the fun. Pretty catchy, huh? But it'd sell like hotcakes. Um, something about it that bothers me. Is it the fact that they took it off the statue and it's bent? 
Wow, you're really firing on all cylinders today, Pearly. More like the rest of the group is dumb. The sword. Was the Mystic Ami holding it last night? Ah. Uh. And another thing. The sword wasn't bent last night like it is now. The child is the brain of this outfit. It seems like it. You're right. Awesome, Pearly. Wouldn't expect any less from my little ace apprentice. The sword is bent, so that must mean... Last night, someone used it somehow. Uh-huh. I just thought of something. Maybe Detective Abney smashed Mask to Mask with it. Like this. Yeah. What the heck? What do you think, Pearly? I think it's even more bent now than it was before. Oh man, my head. My hair. The she 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 do. Ceremonial sword hit in the hand of the Amy Face statue. Wasn't bent before the crime. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna call it the seven branch sword. It's now been added to the court record. All right, so let's take a look at the rest of the room. We should look at the paint. Look what you did, Nick. You spilled paint all over here. I didn't do that. Well, I wasn't here last night. I would have noticed a color this outrageous. But this paint is already dried up. Well then, you should have cleaned it before it dried, Nick. It doesn't dry that fast. Besides, I told you, it wasn't me. Looks like it's been several days since it was spilled. Hey, look at this. What is it? There's some kind of shape left in the bottom left side of the stain. Mm-hmm. Huh? You're right. wonder what it could be. It definitely couldn't be the box that we saw earlier with paint on it. That would make too much sense. The statue of Misagami is so cool. I want a gold statue of myself. I put it in the office. Hey, it's right and company. How about a gold statue of me? Um, Mr. Nick, I'm sorry. I noticed something strange. Huh? What is it, Pearls? The statue of Misagami. Is this where it was last night? Nope. Uh... I'm pretty sure it was closer to the door. Yeah, I think you're right. Would you have noticed it my after the killer case? I question your sense of sight. It's true. I'm surprised she isn't complaining about the absolute darkness down here, to be honest. Good job, Pearly. I wouldn't expect anything less from my ace cousin. The statue was moved on the night of the crime. I mean, face golden statue update in the court record. Hi. I have anything else to look at. Organic is or organized, whichever is about the same. Mr. Nick, what's that big door over there? Looks like it's the door of the actual storeroom. You can see lots of big boxes and stuff back here. I guess that's where they were keeping the sacred urn. Remember, Maya. The Sandra said we're not allowed in there. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what happened here to make a guess as to what happened. I'm pretty sure I know the motive, the character. So I got I got to think about the method. I don't think I have everything I need. Like I can examine like the fact that this was moved and there was paint here. And originally this box was probably over here. What they needed the sword for, I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if they were using it to pry open a box and it got bent that way. Not entirely sure. I'll think about it. Hey, Nick, your cell phone's ringing. Hello, Phoenix right here. Oh, it's me, Gumshoe. Gumshoe, what is it? What's so funny? I'll tell you what's funny, pal. I finally beat him. I beat Mr. Ace Detective. 
Finally, this underdog is the alpha dog today. That stuck up detective's met his match. Yep, I finally caught him. Lock, stock, and barrel. There's no escape for him. You caught him? Are you saying... You, you captured Mask the Mask? Bingo! Well, actually, he surrendered. But I still got him. Mask the Mask surrendered. That's great. So when can we come and pick up the sacred urn? Um, well, you see, I was gonna tell you. What? Something wrong? Do you think you could swing by the detention center sometime? The detention center? Oh, are we representing him? Okay, so we're probably representing the original one, and we gotta prove that even though he probably is guilty of the other thefts, that he's not guilty of this one. And he's either surrendering from the sense that the other guy's using his name and or blackmail. So I think that's the story so far. I don't think the game realizes it probably told me too much information, but that's Phoenix right for you, chat. Listen, I pick up on that stuff really fast. You can't you can't throw that out there. I'm going to just go like snatch. <laughs> so we'll see how close I am with my guess. I'm still not entirely sure what crime was committed to make a guess, though. Like, he took the urn, but was the urn even hiding anywhere? Other than weirdly in a box behind the statue at most? He wants to talk to you. Mass to mass, that is. What? He wants to talk to Nick? I'll be waiting for you, pal, so get over here soon. Beep. Attention center, huh? Alright, so I still don't see the character that was mentioned. Oh no, I could go to the detective agency. Um, can I choose not to? I'll go to the detention center first. October 12th, detention center, visitor's room. Hey pal, welcome to the detention center. That poor guard chat. He lives here now. Sure in a happy mood, aren't you? Yup, after all, we got Master. Right, but, um, so where's the sacred urn? Well, he's not gonna have it, probably. Oh, sorry about that, pal. Guess I didn't really think about it before. But you're the victim in this case. Huh? Well, I guess I should let you guys hear the story straight from the horse's mouth. You know, he's right, Nick. He is? Think about it real hard. We are the victims. Well, I guess so. In a way. Um. So used to thinking of the victim as a dead person, because we're always on murder cases. I excuse me. But anyway, I have to get the sacred urn back. Please, don't just ignore me. Oh. That outfit is outrageous. I guess he decided he wanted to cosplay as Princess Leia, but all he had was a... Admiral's uniform? Question mark? I don't... Or no, no, it's more like a matador outfit. What a strange outfit. Uh... Um, who are you? I am... I... 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 I'm m m mess to mask o okay Hey, Nick, doesn't he look kind of, well... Gangly? Wow. I'm Ron Delight. The, f the famous Master Mask. I don't think this guy could punch his way out of a wet paper bag. Let's ask about Master Mask. So, you're the Master Mask guy? Yes, you bet. No, uh, that's wrong. You see, it's complicated. Sort of yes and sort of no, if you know what I mean. Why is part of the text faded out? Wait, why Why is the text like that? Is the game feeling okay? I mean, I think I know what he means because he's mask to mask, but not the one for this case. I think I already know what's happening, but yes, continue. Hmm? What's wrong? This one is special. Well, when I say wrong, 
What I'm really to say is that it's not right, per se. See, I'm imagining this is supposed to be confusing, but again, the game just, it, it told me too much information. If, if they didn't say the copycat thing, I wouldn't have thought that immediately, but they put the thought in my head, so now it's like, I'm not giving another out here. <laughs> you see, it's not spelled mask to mask. It's actually mask to mask. Or maybe it's just his, maybe that's just to say he's like mumbling it. Is that how they're looking to do that? Mask de mask. I don't know how you pronounce the star. What's him mumbling off? Yeah. What's with this guy? Well, he's a timid little weakling. We know that much. Damn. Don't do that. Don't look at me like that. I don't need your pity. The major crybaby too. Man, they are really trying to make some unlikable characters. <laughs> Is, is it their mission to top the, the previous games? Like, seriously? So, why did you give yourself up? Well, you see, it's because, well, I know why. It's because you stole such a priceless treasure. Now you're overwhelmed with guilt. Am I right? Priceless treasure? A broken old urn? Um, I have a little favor to ask. Yes, what is it? Did you... Go and talk to Desi. Desi? To Desi? Sacred urn. Look, we really want our urn back, so where is it? I'm sorry, I'll give it back. I really will. Uh, maybe not. No, I can't. I can't make promises I keep, can't keep. I'll just end up hurting people. I'm gonna say you pronounce the star, mascar to mask. Oh no. Um, Mr. Nick? I didn't hear what he just said, especially that last part. Okay, that's confirmation it is mumbling. Um, Mr. Damask, do you think you could speak up a little? Y yes, sir. I will. I, I promise. Uh, maybe not. You see, I'm probably speaking my normal voice, so I can't really do anything. Mr. Damask, about the urn. Oh, yes, the urn. Right away. Uh, actually, no. I just want to, like, reach in there and slap him. <laughs> just like... <laughs> Alright, chat, like... I'm not... I'm not liking his gimmick so far. I wouldn't mind telling you. But I'm afraid, actually, you wouldn't believe me anyway. Enough already. Just tell it to us straight. Please. Please don't yell at me. I... I'm sorry. That urn, I... I lost it. What? What? I don't think he lost it. What did you just say? Did you say you lost it? Yes. Oh, uh, no. Oh, uh, maybe so. I mean, yes, I lost it. Wow, this is the most unconvincing defendant so far. What? What indeed? Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, I lost it. Like I said, these things just happen. No, they don't. <laughs> right, chat? No, they absolutely don't. Oh, let me minimize this so I can reach out a little easier. You're on the train and you get distracted and you forget your bag, you know? I, I don't think you would forget that, though. What? You forgot our sacred urn on a train? Wait a minute. You went on the train dressed like that? Hmm. No, 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 I... I was just speaking hypothetically, that's all. Anyway. I'm sorry! I just lost it somewhere. I don't know where. Okay, so now I'm going for... Now I'm almost guaranteeing this is blackmail. Okay, so he's being blackmailed to potentially surrender. And he doesn't know the thing because he wasn't the person involved. So this this checks out, even though he's being really weird and kind of annoying. This guy's story is more surreal than a Dali painting. It's a reference. This guy is a moron since a parameter somewhat. I'm really sure this creep is mask to mask. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it is. 
Hmm. Hold on, chat. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to think into the future. Okay, so let, let's let's work backwards. <laughs> we are okay. So we, I'm pretty sure I know who did it, right? So based off the evidence, the paint is probably going to be on the urn, right? Because the box was against the wall and it's been sitting there for a while. So I'm thinking the urn or the box are going to have fingerprints. So I think that's going to be a piece of evidence at some point. I don't know how the blackmail is going to be brought up, but it feels pretty obvious. I don't know... I, I'm assuming other characters have to come into play, so that that's still a big question mark there. We're probably going to disprove the forge evidence of the camera, because we know the other guy set it up. So all the things that we just looked at from the urn to the sword to everything else will disprove the photo. But I, I'm trying to think what the sword was even used to do. I think that for me is kind of a blank spot. Like it could be used to pry something. He could have run it over because he backed up the trolley. I'm not sure what he's used it for yet. Is there anything else we can gleam from what we saw earlier? I think that's it. We'll move forward. Maya, don't call him a creep. Although I do have to admit, I understand your doubts about this guy. Actually, I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss a line there. I got distracted thinking about the plot. Oh, she asked if you're really sure if it's him. Okay, that's right. Desi. So who is this Desi person? Please don't talk about my wife like that! I guess she must be his wife. Okay, so maybe the wife will be a witness and that'll introduce the blackmail letter. But I'm... Oh no. I, I feel like there's a mur- I feel like there's a murder. Like, I feel like the with the bent sword, I feel like the only thing I could think of is somebody was struck over the head and died. Like, my brain keeps going there, but they said there's been no crime yet of murder, so... I don't know. We'll- we'll see. I guess it could be TBD. So he goes, huh, huh, I'm sorry, the truth is, it's my wife that told me to have you all come here. Um, do you think you could go visit her at my hideout? Hideout? Mr. Nick, what does he mean by hideout? Oh, sorry. He actually meant to say my secret base. Uh-huh. Secret base? Well, my apartment, actually. Palazzo Pel Pepe. What? Third floor. Let's go have a look, Nick. Tomas Tomas hideout. Hmm. Something tells me she just likes the sound of the word hideout. Okay. I mean, do I pre can I present the calling card to him and see if he responds? Oh, that's Mas Tomas calling card. Pretty nice looking, huh? He looks so happy. I'm not very good at writing, you see. So I bought a book called How to Write Business Letters and studied hard. Well, I guess you could call thievery a type of business. Present our attorney badge. Nothing interesting. Uh, let's go to Damas Hideout, I guess. Hmm. October 12, Mass Damas Hideout. That is a ridiculous setup. Wow. Check this place out. I, too, put a rocket next to my villainous outfit and recording tape. That also looks like a robot face. That's a combo. No doubt about it. This is Master Mass Hideout, all right. Who is it? Is that you, Ronnie? Huh? Who are you people? Um, are you Desi Delight? That's right. 
I'm Desiree. Ah. Oh, you must be the lawyer. And the victim. She's got wheels for earrings. Okay. Yeah, that's us. Phil's wouldn't tell us to stop by and speak with you. I'm Maya Faye. This is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. Nikki boy and Maya, huh? I can tell how grateful... Oh, excuse me. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you decided to help my Ronnie. Well, um, <laughs> you're welcome. Did she really call me Nikki boy? Let's examine the room. It's best the mask. There's a tape recorder hanging from his neck. Let me see that. Click. Oh, we're taking this crown now. Better luck next time, gentlemen. Oh, I don't get it. What's this supposed to be, Nick? What, what, what do you mean it? Is that old bag's disco mask from the game on the dresser there? I think so. Hmm. Thing looks vaguely familiar. Oh, I know, it's a fishbowl. Well, an upside down one anyway. I think it's a helmet. An alien helmet. And that looks like a tape recorder or something next to it. I think it's a transceiver. An alien transceiver. Nick, do you think maybe you could act like a grown up for a little bit? Getting lectured by Maya to be more of an adult. That's a new low. I feel like I needed a laugh track there. Nick, it's a torpedo! It's hard to believe, but it sure looks real. Where could he pick something up like this? Please don't say that torpedoes are things people just lying around. Lying around. Excuse me. There are a bunch of books lying here. They're all romantic sounding novels about famous heists and fantastic thieves. Wow, look at all the bookmarks and notes stuck into them. Let's see here. Note. Must remember this way of thieves la- Oh, excuse me. Must remember this thief's way of laughing. Very useful. Note. A calling card is an important part of any good thieves modus operandi. Wow. Ron really studied his stuff. She's close, we need to get out of here. I got some bad news, Chris. <laughs> I got some bad news. That's probably the only thing I know about this case. Oh, that's so cute. It's called a hot air balloon, you know. Wow, there's no fool in you. Can I make my own balloon now? I'll even let you ride in it, Nick. The emblem on the balloon is supposed to be top secret. Proof enough that Ronda Light really is mask to mask. I'm not tell Maya. She gets kind of scary when it comes to celebrities. There's a whole bunch of stuff piled up over here. Duck and cover. It's a missile. Did you know there's d d dynamited missiles? But they're not heavy enough to be real. Oh, wait. They're really just well-made toys. What are these rolls of paper stuck in the trash can? Theft of the Mazarin Stone. The Great Albatross Strategy. Theft of the Immortal Goddess Statue. The Great Knuckle Bomber Strategy. Did the police even investigate this place? Hey, Nick! Look on top of the chair! Oh, oh is that blackmail? Did I find it? Looks like an envelope. And a letter. Hmm. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, let's read it. Maya, you know we shouldn't do that. Oh, come on! <laughs> Chad, I'm calling it right now. It's a blackmail letter. <laughs> I'm just like, this This would probably have solved the case if we just read it. <laughs> what are you talking about? The letter could be an important clue. It is, Maya. It probably is. No way. You can't just go reading a private letter because you feel like it. Oh, Phoenix, you're such an idiot. Hm. It's not just because I feel like it. It really could be important. I was sure it was a clue. I guess I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Chat, this is where you throw your hands in the air. What an idiot. Well, anyway, when we have to come back and go read that letter, because he's too stupid to read it right now. Oh, we don't have any comments on the wigs. 
I think I investigated thoroughly. Please don't investigate. That's your, that's your job, Nick. You're a lawyer after all. Wait. Yeah, pretty much. Ron Delay. Um, about your husband. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? A bit weak sometimes, though. A bit. By the way, did you know they mentioned my own TV? Huh? Really? They said you own the urn and that you do some shady training at a law office now. Remind me not to watch that channel's news program. After I saw that, I thought it'd be a good idea to meet the lawyer they mentioned. I see. My Ronnie. He has a powerful imagination and gets deluded easily. Who talks like this? What? He kept insisting he was going to surrender to the police. I didn't know what to do, she says with a smile for no reason. It was me. I stole that urn, he kept saying, as if it was even possible. Huh? But are you saying he didn't? <laughs> of course he didn't. Why would my Ronnie ever do something like that? Well, you know, it's a priceless treasure. And he's, and he's, you know. Is it possible his own wife doesn't know a secret identity? More like he was probably in the house at the time, so it couldn't have been true. Desiree Delight. So she's his alibi. Me? I'm kind of, I'm the kind of woman that needs excitement in her life. Oh, excitement, huh? Yes. I'm at my happiest when I'm racing along with my bike going at full throttle. Running a motorcycle is like putting your life on the line. You know what I mean? Uh-oh, chat. She's just one card shop away from being a 5Ds character, I'm just saying. Well, I think that depends on how you ride it. I'm the type that can't stand living a boring, dreary old life with no action. No offense, but your husband, Ron, doesn't exactly look like the risk-taking type himself. You're right about that. He's definitely not one for thrills and danger. But I do have to say he makes up for it in other ways. Wait, what does that mean? Other ways? Yes, money. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. I guess, I guess that... I guess I could have seen that coming. Yes, money. Ronnie's incredibly rich and super generous. He bought me a bike that's so fast it would make your head spin. And shopping? I like to shop so much it makes Ron's head spin. The other day, it actually happened. His head actually started to spin. Man, talk about a high-maintenance wife. So where does Mr. Delight get all of his money from? Ronnie's a security guard. Put their lives on the line, right? So they get paid tons of money in return. Tons of it. He's a security guard. I think it's my turn for my head to spin. The night of the crime. Can you tell us about what happened last night? Hmm. What time did that incident take place again? What time was it again, Ma Maya? Well, according to Detective Gumshoe, it was around 1.30 in the morning. Aw, uh, last night was horrible. I got pulled over. Pulled over? Yes. I always do my best flying at night. Why? Um, you're talking about your motorcycle, right? Yes. Anyway, last night I got pulled over by a policeman. I can't believe he caught up to me. It was a great chase, let me tell you. When he finally caught me, the poor man was as white as a sheet. It's about three in the morning when I finally got home. That's like she's got an airtight alibi. Well, oh, so she isn't his alibi. Interesting. Well, what about Mr. Delight? I don't really know. We weren't together at that time of night. And when I got home, he was already fast asleep. But basically, he's got no alibi. Hmm. Uh... Can I just ask about the husband? Or the thief? Okay, so we're asking whether or not she knows he's masked the mask. 
Her response is, Mask to mask, of course, I know all about it. My husband is his biggest fan. Yep, what? Huh? Biggest fan? Yes, and Ronnie could be pretty delusional sometimes. That's how this whole misunderstanding happened. Wait a minute. Did you say delusional? Yes, that's right. I just don't know what I'm going to do with him. You see, Ronnie actually believes that he is mask to mask. What? What are you talking about? And ask about her husband directly. No, he doesn't look like it. He can really get things done when he puts his mind to it. Really? So when exactly does he put his mind to it? Well, not very often, I admit. What exactly does Miss Delight see in her husband anyway? Well, the answer is money, apparently. Wow. You must have really seen skyrockets when you first met to love him so much. What? <laughs> Congratulations, Calvisha. What is this? Hold on. You must have really seen skyrockets when you first met the love skyrockets? I agree, Blue Donna. Huh? What if? Is this a phrase I've never heard before? You must have really seen skyrockets. I have never heard that used in that sense. Does chat know what does chat know what this is supposed to say in the beginning? Fireworks. But like even in even if I replace it with fireworks, you must have really seen fireworks when you met first met to love him so much. It's it's emphasizing that something has happened because I don't know. Skyrockets. That's such a weird phrase. Skyrockets. I know people still use that word. Yeah, maybe it's supposed to be for fireworks. But even that phrase is still really odd to me. Even that whole phrase, even if I replace it with fireworks, you must have seen fireworks. You love him that much. I feel like it was supposed to say something along the lines of it must have been fireworks when you met him, not you must have seen, not you have seen fireworks. I don't, it's, the way that whole sentence is constructed confuses me. We're, we'll move on. Let's talk about delusions, I guess. So, when did Ron first become Master Mask? What are you talking about? He's not Master Mask. Huh? But, oh, wait a second. Stop saying wait a second. Look around in this, at this room. This place is obviously Mask to Mask's hideout. No, no, you're totally wrong. A real thief's hideout wouldn't look like this. It's because Ronnie is so timid that he looks up to heroic figures. Heroic figures? But Mask to Mask is a bad guy. So he's deluded, huh? Could that really be true? Anyway, if he really had stolen the urn, wouldn't he still have it? Well... I suppose so. Then why don't you ask him if he has the urn or not? She has a point. Mr. Light isn't exactly the criminal type. But something about Ron's behavior bothers me. Maybe it's true. Maybe Mr. Delight isn't mass to mass after all. Say, can I ask you something, Nicky boy? Hmm. What is it? I know it may seem like a bad girl on the outside. Well, one thing I won't stand for is illegal activity. I had a feeling you wouldn't. You're tough, but I can tell you've got a good heart. Somebody framed my poor Ronnie, I just know it. Um, could you give this to Ronnie for me? A letter? Yes, for Ronnie. I want him to fight back. Miss Delight? Okay, you've got it. Just relax and leave it all to us. Desiree's letter added to court record. That's her husband, Ron Delay. It apparently contains something important. All right, chat. Give me two minutes. I blew through my water way faster than I thought I would.
Okay, chat. I'm back. Yeah, but Calvishan, the problem is like the sentence still doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's it's not that it's it's not that it's skyrocket versus firework. Like the sentence, even if I replace that word, it doesn't make the sentence didn't make sense to me. I don't know what she was trying to convey. That's why I was really, really confused. <laughs> it's like I heard of, you know, I, I've heard of things like, you know, it was like a, a bunch of fireworks going off to see them, but that's not how it was used. I've never heard of the way it was used there. It was just really awkward. I don't know if it's some kind of cultural thing, but it was just like that. It did not translate well. I think what doesn't help is that we can clearly see some other things are mistranslated. So we've already had typos. We're not very far in the game where things are just kind of weird. I'm surprised they don't just put this as the seven branch sword here, but whatever. I think we're done here. Eventually I'll go to, I mean, is there a point to going here yet or should it? I guess I should just go back here. Yeah, let's present the letter and advance the plot, I think. Oh, that's right. Here, this is from your wife. Oh, from Desi, thank you. Letter given a mess to mask, actually more like taken. My dear Ronnie, how are you? I'm doing fine. Clutching on that letter so hard. The ink is going to be squeezed out. Yeah, like what? Yeah, like we could f we like it admits that the word is supposed to be fireworks, but it's like the, the sentence didn't make sense even when I replaced it. I, I don't know what they were going for at all. He looks so happy. You should write a letter to Mystic Baya too, Mr. Nick. Um, Mr. Lawyer? Yes. In the letter that Desi wrote, she said, Ask this guy to be your lawyer. Huh? Um, I know this would be asking a lot, but... Could you please take my case? My trial starts tomorrow. Hey, hang on a second. He can't be your lawyer. Why not? What do you mean, why not? We're the victims in this case, right? Victims of this Damask guy. Well, yeah. But according to Desiree, he didn't do it. She said, poor man, he's deluded himself to thinking he did it. Right, Mr. Nick? Come on. She could be the lying she could be lying to protect her husband. Well, that's true. Uh no, actually it's not. Actually, it's hard to say. Oh no, it's spreading. Oh please! I'll give you the treasure of your choice in return. Hmm. What should I do? <laughs> I would have refused this case so bad, Chuck. Being <laughs> like, bye, sucker. <laughs> we'll take his case. Well, Mr. Delayed, I've decided to give it a try. I'll defend you. Really? You will? Hey, what are you doing, Nick? He, he's a thief. You can't trust him. Well, he may be a thief. But I think there's more to this case than meets the eye. Is he a transformer? What's happening? Mr. Nick, I was wrong about you. I shouldn't have trusted you. Oh, please go away, Pearl. Please, let's have a misunderstanding you never return. <laughs> I would not be heartbroken about it. Pearls? I can't believe you defend this person after what he did to Mystic Maya. I... I'll never forgive you, ever! Goodbye. And now she's crying. I'm not gonna imitate crying. But Pearly, wait! This is going to be ugly. I'll go after her. Um, sorry about that. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Well, you couldn't have known she'd react like that. I guess I might as well start investigating. Oh, Maya. Where's Pearls? She said she's going back to the office. We'll check on her later. Would you? What about you? Are you okay with me taking Mr. Delight's case? Yeah. I'm fine, Nick. I believe in you. He sniffles. I think I'm gonna cry. Um, I, uh, I know you have a lot to, a lot of work to do. I, I really appreciate it. Okay, Nick, let's get the show on the road. Okay. Do I? Oh, I wasn't given the opportunity to go back to the other agency? 
Oh, I was going to do that now. Huh? Well, if I accidentally advance the plot, I advance the plot. October 12th, Wright and Company Law Offices. Oh, uh, Mr. Nick, w welcome back! Oh, hey, Pearls. You're back too, I see. I, uh, who went and brought us... bought a strawberry shortcake? I'm gonna make some tea to go with it. Hey, uh, Pearls? Looks like she feels really bad about what happened at the detention center. What? What? Why are we... Chat, this bothers me so much. Why are we flashbacking to something that was just... It just happened. It, it just, it just happened. I don't need a flashback. This isn't even in a different game chapter. This was one scene ago. <laughs> uh, I'm not reading this dialogue again. I, it was like seven lines ago. It wasn't even <laughs> like literally not that long ago. It hasn't been a minute in real life or arguably the game. Miss Maya, the tea is ready. Oh, thanks. Come on, Mr. Nick, please have some of this cake. Yeah, thanks. Um, pearls? Oh, excuse me. It's the middle of cleaning the toilet. Hey, it's okay. I just cleaned it this morning. Too late. This might be a good time for me to ask about her. Oh, I can go back here. Okay, let's go here then. October 12th at me, Detective Agency. This is a Detective Agency? Looks more like the set of some B-grade horror movie. Hello? Is anyone here? Looks like nobody's home. Hmm, what a waste of time. Hey, I know. Let's take that framed picture back with us as a memento. Is she stealing something? Don't you dare, Maya. Guess we'll have to try it back later. We'll still examine things even if nobody's here. What a creepy painting. It's like he's looking right at me. Maybe we should put up a big portrait of you in the office, Nick. I can even paint it for you. Maybe you could pose while cleaning the toilet. I think I'd prefer something a bit more... dignified. Hey, Nick. What's this thing here? It's called a gramophone. In the old days, people used, to, used them to listen to music. You can't be serious. I think it's probably for purifying the air or something. Bet you 50 cents. Come on, what do you say? Forget it. Never pay up when you lose. Whoa, it's a huge hearth. That's a fireplace. So, what's the difference? You need to stop judging things based on narrow-minded cultural assumptions, Nick. Didn't they just do this earlier? Right, sorry. Literally just copied that statement. That one's Im That's one impressive bookshelf filled with some very impressive books. My life is an ace detective. Unabridged edition by Luke Atme, Ace Detective. Hey, he's even got one of those ship in a bottle thingies. Ah, uh, would you look at that? There's a little Luke Atme doll at the helm. How cute! There's a microscope here, too. What if he was researching something? The glass slides have different names on them. This one says Atme Virus. Uh, um. Uh, uh, okay. Hmm. This guy's just dying to make a name for himself, huh? It's getting kind of irritating, actually. Is is this suddenly going to go all Resident Evil on us? Like, what? <laughs> we, we start reading his diary, and just one of the entries just goes, Itchy tasty, itchy tasty. This desk is literally covered with all sorts of chemistry equipment. Oh, I just love chemistry. Say, Nick, I bet you didn't know this, but... Water is made up of carbon and hydrogen. No, no, not carbon. Oxygen. Oxygen and hydrogen. Oh, well, there are always alternative theories, I guess. If by alternative theories, you mean the ones you make up in... Oh, excuse me, let's try this again. If by alternate theories, you mean the ones you make up inside that head of yours. Oh, no, alternate facts. It already, it already began, chat. Let's see, anything else to go through here? Nothing else to find. Okay. So now we don't have to do this when the other guy inevitably shows up. So now what does it want us to do? Do we have to go back to the hall? October 12th, Lordly Taylor, main exhibition hall. Amaya! Oh, Miss Andrews! 
I'm so sorry. It's my fault. Your precious urn. Your precious urn! That's suppose. Please, calm down. What's wrong? It never ends. Everything I touch ends in failure. Maya, I'm so sorry. I'll do anything to make it up to you. No, no, it's okay. Don't... I don't... I know I don't look it, but I'm good with my hands. I could make you another urn. Hold on, just wait, okay? Breathe, calm down, and talk to us. Forgive me. Forgive me. Mask calling card. Um, so when did you get the calling card from Master Mask? Let's see. Exactly ten days ago. I was going to show it to the police, but that detective stopped me. Hmm. Chad, it's at like 99.999% at this point. <laughs> um, so you asked Detective Abney to help with security? Yes. In fact, it was about 20 days ago that I hired him. He seemed to know much more about Mass to Mass than the police. Hmm. So you hired him for security even before the calling card arrived? Well, yes. I had a premonition that something bad might happen. I've learned to trust my hunches. Hunches? Ironically, I guess by hiring him. She got the urn stolen. <laughs> Sucks to be her, I guess. So that's why there are security cameras. Even in the basement warehouse? Yes. Lord Lee Taylor is very serious about their security measures. It was their way of saying, bring it on to any potential thieves. Well, he sure brought it last night and he even left with a nice souvenir. Security. Um, can you tell us about the security for the treasure exhibit? It was all my fault. Never should have called this paltry little collection a treasure exhibit anyway. Why do you say that? Aaron that was stolen is a pretty important object. Maybe. But its actual value after appraisal was, well, practically zero. Zero? I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. But that urn contains the soul of Mystic Ami. Anyway, I left all the security arrangements to Detective at me. But... Five days ago, I began receiving all sorts of other exhibit items from Karain. Lots of people started going in and out of the warehouse down there. So maybe one of them was actually Master Mask in disguise. No. I personally checked out everyone that came through here, so that's not possible. Knowing Adrian, she probably even checked out what they ate for breakfast that morning. Alright, nobody left to talk to. I guess we'll talk to Pearl. First, oh, or apparently we'll just talk to her in ourselves. I first met Pearl a year ago. It's when that murder happened at Crane Village. Oh, please stop reminding me about this. <laughs> please stop. <laughs> the case was horrible. So remember what she said to me when we first met. You, you're Mr. Nick, right? You're, you're Miss Sigmaya's special someone. Hey, Maya. I always thought it was because she was young, but... But what? Pearls, I think she's got the wrong idea. About... You and me. Huh? Or I... Um... There's something you need to understand. W what is it? Um... It's kind of like a Korean village custom, sort of. 
Rose seems to love you a lot. Well, it's because I'm her only cousin, and, well... As of the murder case last year, Hurley's mother is... Oh, yeah. I remember now. Earl's mother, Morgan Fay. She's serving a prison term in isolation right now. So you see, I'm the only family Pearly has right now. But it's the same for me too. Maya. My mother's gone, too. Okay. To the Korean village custom. There are hardly any men in the Korean village. Now that you mention it, I never actually saw any men there when I visited. I'm pretty sure I told you about it a long time ago. About how spiritual powers run very strong in the Fey family. Is your sister still around despite being dead? I really hope they don't summon her spirit. Please let her rest. <laughs> just, I beg of you, please just stop bringing her up. Like, just stop. <laughs> Find other people to channel. Yeah, you did. That's why you're undergoing training to be a spirit medium, right? I'm a ghost. Indeed, she is a ghost. Yeah, the only thing is, only women can actually inherit the spiritual power. That's why the whole culture of Crane Village kind of revolves around its women. Well, that's understandable. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but because of that, there tends to be a lot of unsuccessful marriages. Oh? Well... Men start to feel left out after a while. Then they just start leaving. Especially if the man has a daughter. Are you saying that Pearl's father? He's gone. He left the village when she was very young. Boy, that's tough. Yeah. She grew up seeing nothing but unhappy marriages all around her. That's why she's so sensitive to things like that. But how does that explain her misinterpretation of their relationship? I feel like that was a very long sidebar that didn't address the initial point of the conversation. Like, okay, and... You didn't correct this for a whole year because... Dot, 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 question mark. Nope. Okay. Maya's mother. So your mother's still missing? Yeah. No one has any idea where she is. Maya's mother. Misty Fay. The current master of the Korean channeling technique. She disappeared 17 years ago, after getting involved in a certain police case. Are you sure she's still alive, right? M missing Faye, pretty much. Yeah, I know she is. It's sort of a spirit medium thing. And if your mother doesn't come back, then what? Then according to the laws of the village, I'll become the next master. Miss Maya, the master of the crane technique. Sounds like a heavy responsibility. Yeah, but there's no one else with the blood of the Feymane family who's a spirit medium. Well, Nick, why don't we go out and start investigating? We're not going to learn anything just sitting around the office. Wait, I already finished investigating, though. Yeah, I know, but... First, I want to talk to Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick? Yeah? Hi. I acted like a baby. 
pearls. I doubted you, even though Mystic Maya trusted you completely. I guess I still have a lot of training to do. Mr. Nick. Yes? I, from the bottom of my heart, I apologize for what I said. Oh, it's okay. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I'm going out now for a little bit. Huh? Where are you going? I may be small, but I still have a lot of spirit channeling power. I'm going to show you I could be useful too, by finding some evidence. Hey, wait a... Ugh, she sure runs fast. Nick. Let's back off and give her some room, okay? It's totally normal to have a nine-year-old running around in a city unsupervised, claiming to have superpowers, towards a crime scene where a lot of people probably know her as a potential witness and probably have grudges against her. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I'm sure she's fine on her own. Sucks to be her. Okay, so now he's back in here. Because I was going to say, I already investigated. And we're not her parents, true. Hello? Well, well. How lovely it is to see you again, my dear. Welcome to my abode. Relax and soak up the atmosphere. I may have done the ghost line too early. Oh, no. Uh, um, I'm actually kind of... Shush, silence! He really does remind me of Dr. Hottie. I, I think it was that character that kept doing the annoying close-ups of stuff. I don't think it was a magnifying glass, though. <laughs> Precisely as I expected. Well, what is? Safari. The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium, am I correct? I already told you this. Um, we've already been through this. Glad she said it. Ha! Huh. So my estimation was correct. Savari! How truly elegant! I was gonna say, Spy Family would be very happy to hear him saying the word elegant this often. Now then, what can I do for you? Ask about the night of the crime. You mentioned before that you were on guard duty all alone last night. Precisely. This is my fifth encounter with my arch enemy. Eleganto, exactly. I refuse to allow anyone to interfere with the rightful pursuit of my prey. Heard you've been after Mask Star Damas since his very first theft? We'll save the star for chat. Just once, though. Yes, my dear. So you've done your homework. In his very first heist, a vile thief pilfered the famous jewel, the Tear of Emanon. First encountered him in the museum's sacred hall, the crime scene itself. So, that's where your hider is security for the treasure exhibit? Pretty sure it said that Adrian Andrews hired him. Yes, I borrowed some equipment from Lordly Taylor and set up the perfect trap. It must mean the security camera. But I thought you were watching the whole area yourself, too. So how did Master Mass manage to steal the urn? That's a million dollar question. When is Damas's modus operandi? I'm surprised with all the things the game explains to you in very stupid ways, it doesn't explain what modus operandi is. Slash operandi. I mean, they have them trying to explain what water is, so, like, I'm just kind of surprised they're just throwing it out there. Um, Mr. Atney, did you know about the sacred urn? I'm interested in only one thing, my dear, and that is mask to mask. Sacred urn? Puh! It has nothing to do with this case. But... Wasn't that what Master Mask stole this time? I am a hunter, sir. Earn was nothing more than a lure to catch my prey. Do your... 
Oh, let me say this again. Do you yourselves remember the shape of the individual peanuts you throw to pigeons? Wow. I don't think I like this guy's attitude, Nick. Well, anyway, looks like he doesn't know about the urn. The mask M.O. His modus operandi. Um, there's something that's kind of bothering me. Yeah, it's almost like this one doesn't match his other crimes. Please, my dear, ask me anything you like. After all, we're all but seekers wandering alone in the dark. Well, I was wondering how Master Mask managed to steal the urn. I mean, isn't it strange that you don't seem to know? He dot dot dots. Yeah, now that you mention it, it is strange. After all, you were on guard that night at the scene of the crime. Unless you were sound asleep, you should have at least seen Master Mask. Uh-oh. Here it comes, chat. Single lock. What the? It's a side lock. Side lock? Or a psyche lock, depending on how you pronounce it, I guess. Psych lock. Hey, Nick. What is this psych lock thing? Well, your Makatama lets me see when people are keeping secrets. I feel like you should know this, <laughs> because it came from you and Pearl. By breaking their mental locks, I can find out what those secrets are. What? This Magatama has that kind of power? Maya, you're the one who gave me this Magatama last year. I mean, yeah. Well, it's true that this Magatama has surprised Fey family heirloom, but... Pearly was the one that actually imbued it with spiritual powers, right? That's why I don't really know much about what it could do. This is the woman that's going to take over the Karain channeling school someday? How do you do it? How do you break the Cyclock thing? Well, you present the Magatama to the person with the secret. Hmm. Cool. Can't wait to see it in action. Come on, try it out! Oh boy. I think the future master still needs to learn how to be patient. Do we have what we need? I have camera data, the weapon, the urn, the statue, maybe? Mr. Admi, you must know more than you're letting on. How did Master Mass manage to seal the urn? In order for a secret to remain a secret, it must be kept secret. Last night, Luke Atme must have encountered Master Mask. Why would he be trying to hide it? Nick, go for it. Let's break that psych lock thing of his. I don't think she really understands what she's talking about. Well, it's been a while, but let's give it a shot. I mean, the worst thing that happens, I botch it once, I guess. It's gonna present. Take that, chat. Master Mass M.O. Detective Ami, you're standing guard at the scene of the crime. There's no way you didn't see Master Mass commit the crime. Well, now, I can hardly see why you're so positive about that. Yes, indeed, I was guarding the warehouse. That much is true. And I can tell you for certain that not a single person passed through that door. Oh, well, now the camera data will disprove that. Not sure why, but this Ami guy's lying through his teeth. I know. I'll show him some proof. Detective Ami, have you heard proof that someone went through the door last night? Take that! Take that! There is a security camera set up at the scene of the crime. It should have automatically taken a photo of anyone that went through that door. Precisely. This has a lot of the it automatically takes a photo moment between the first game as well as the scene where the photo of the lake was automatically taking photos. Seems to be a big trend in Phoenix right so far. Why does this guy look like Yun Penguin for Batman? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I'm like, this guy is such evil, sinister vibes. If I had even any doubts that this guy is the real villain, I mean, like, they were solved the moment we saw him. Hope you don't mind, but we've already gotten our hands on the camera data. As you can see, the camera went off exactly once last night. Maybe we're this universe's Harvey Dent. 
What? But my monocle didn't catch anyone in its flash. It must be some kind of computer malfunction. It, it must be. Maybe it was your monocle that malfunctioned. What? Are you saying I didn't do my duty properly? Detective Abney, you must have seen the thief last night. The question is, why are you trying to hide it? If he's hiding it, there must be some reason. Some reason that he desperately wants to keep hidden. I've got just the piece of evidence that should prove it. Wait, what? Didn't I already... Wait, didn't I already... Okay, let's suppose you didn't manage to see Mask to Mask. In that case, the reason you didn't do that time was because you... Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I'm like, wh I'm like, what evidence are we presenting here? I was like, wait, didn't I present it? Fast asleep, using the bathroom, unconscious. I guess we're implying that allegedly the sword was used to beat someone over the head. I was saying it was probably used to assault somebody. I'm surprised nobody has died so far in this case, but we'll see. Unconscious. I'm afraid that making a guess is not enough. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Show me your evidence. I'll present the bent sword. Take that! Take that. Detective Adney, you were knocked unconscious by the thief, weren't you? <laughs> Surely you must be joking. No, 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 we're Harvey Dent. Joker's somebody else. You think that I, look at me, could be knocked unconscious so easily? The sword proves it. Now that's... Before the theft, the sword was in the hand of the statue Amy Fay. Furthermore, at that time, it was not bent. Uh, there's only one explanation. You were struck on the head and knocked unconscious by this sword. Well, detective, how about it? I'm impressed. You truly are an ace attorney. Unlock successful chat. The mask ML. I can't deny that there may be a small hint of truth in what you say. So, you were knocked out when the thief first clobbered you. Clobber, what an ugly way of saying it. But I suppose you could put it that way. The coward struck at the precise moment that I turned to look at the computer. So you never noticed the thief had entered the warehouse? No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Perhaps the air ducts or the sewer pipes. And my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. Ouch. Mr. Ami should have his poor head examined. You could say that again. Who could have underestimated the thief that badly? The seven branch sword updated in the court record. Knocked at me out during the crime with slash a blow to the head. I feel like with how much space is there, they could have just spelled out with. Well, looks like we got one thing cleared up anyway. Huh? What? That Abney is the greatest ace detective in the world? No, and he never actually saw the thief. Oh, that's right. The thief may not even be mask to mask. Just one moment, Sir Lawyer. The thief was unquestionably mask to mask. But you never actually saw him. Perhaps so. I installed a security camera for such... Or just such a contingency. Oh. Last night, the camera went off exactly once. Behold, this is a photo of the dastardly thief taken by the security camera. Okay, there's so much wrong with this photo. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> well, I think I know what's gonna doom him in the trial later. I'm like, between things like the timestamp, the paint spill, the awkward mark on the floor where the box should have been. It's Shonda Mask, Mask Marine. 
Oh, man. Now, this is a bad photo for him. Mask to mask! Security cam for a photo ad up added to the court record. What a storm of entrance taken by the camera on the night of the crime. Thief could be none other than the arch criminal. Mask to mask! See, because they were saying earlier it was 1.30. Now the crime, the camera data says it went off at 1. All these were moved aside and such like that, so there's a lot of things we could probably catch them on later. The thief could be none other than the arch criminal, Mask to Mask. After all, he has a very good reason for committing such brazen crimes. Well, what are you talking about? Love how good bad the security camera systems are in this game. I took a photo, but just one, no video. Yeah. Yeah. Damask's reason. So, what do you mean by he had a very good reason? Exactly that. Mr. Delight had a very good reason to dress up and commit those crimes. There should be a green envelope somewhere in his room. You'll need to go and investigate. How would he know what color it is? This is like so many red flags, chat. This is like, okay. Right, chat? We'll just, just admit to blackmail then. Right, chat? Like, real real smooth there at me. You could have just said there's there's probably... Not there's probably a letter. There's a green letter. Like, okay. I, like, there's a pretty much 99% chance this is a blackmail letter. Absolutely, he's blackmail. But how would you know about that exactly, Maya? At least Maya is thinking about this. Mm, have you forgotten? You're speaking to the finest age detective ever to walk on the face of the earth. That didn't answer the question. The most brilliant mind since well ever. Look at me. He still didn't answer the question, chat. Uh, I guess we better go take a look just in case. No, you press him on this. Hunt him down. This case would be over. Anyway, now we're going to go back to the letter. Remember the letter where they're like, Oh, we can't look at it because it's just, we just can't go looking at other people's stuff. Even though that's what we do in like literally every damn place we're in. Fine, I'll look at the letter. Hey, Nick, remember what De Detective Atney said? What? No, 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 no. Don't you dare flash back to this. This was for... Four dialogue boxes ago. Excuse me. It's... <laughs> Phoenix Wright, I don't need you to flash back to this. This just happened. E even if I somehow took a break and I went somewhere else and then, and then came to this, I still wouldn't need this. <laughs> yeah, I know it's green envelope in red. A green envelope, huh? Looks like this is it. Okay, let's have a look. Flashback Central is real. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 a.m. on October 12th and bring 50,000. Yeah, but then he wouldn't be able to make it there because wouldn't that building be too f far? I feel like this is just very easily disproven on so many levels, like 10 a.m. versus 12.58. Then there's the amount of money when the urn isn't worth anything. There's so many things that just don't line up with the story. It's getting kind of ridiculous. 50,000 is honestly not... That's not the most ridiculous amount ever. This this is a, a b b blackmail letter. Yeah, Phoenix, it's okay. I figured that out a long time ago. Sure, it looks like a major clue, all right. It's almost like I shouldn't have stopped myself from reading it for some reason. Blackmail letter written with the fountain pen found in Ron's room. Add it to the court record. Ding dong. Oh, someone's at the door. I'll be right back. Won't take but a second, I promise. Oh, maybe? Hold on. Hold on. Complication. So he has to go to KB security. We know he's a security guard. Is the plot twist he's being blackmailed by somebody else? Because, I mean, like, if he was supposed to be a security guard, right, and potentially at some point in any of the previous places where he committed a crime, it's possible he was supposed to be a security guard there. 
and he got busted by video evidence. That would be funny if it was video evidence, too, because chat was just complaining about how there's no video. There's only video when it's convenient to reveal the truth, I suppose. But not this early, sadly. We don't have any dancing uh, badger at this point. Oh, thank you for coming. That's so nice of you. Mmm. I don't know who's saying this. When I see a damsel in distress, I just can't help myself. Hmm. Please, come on in. Make some coffee. Really? Okay. Guess I'll make myself at home, pretty lady. Oh, no. Hmm. I have... I'm like... 55% sure who this is. We didn't see him very much in the second game, but he was in a lot of cases in the first game, will be what my guess is. Wait a minute. I know that voice. Oh no. That that percentage is going to about 90% now, chat. Oh, Nikki boy. I'm so sorry, but I've got another guest. Uh... Is he gonna hit you over the head with the thinker? <laughs> ah! You, you're... Nick, it's you, and Maya too! What a fluke! I guess I didn't see that one coming. Uh, Larry! Long time no see! What, you know each other? <laughs> yeah, watch out for clocks, exactly. The Nicky boy! Nick, do you and this girl have, you know... Something going on? Something? You mean what I think? I underestimated you, Nick. A gorgeous lady like this? And Mary, too? Way to go, dude. I knew it. Just in when things couldn't get any worse. It's time to cue in the butts. Larry Butts. Ever since grade school, he's been... Not exactly a close friend, but... Yeah, we know each other. Hey man, that wasn't nice. How was your very first client? We've got quite the storied history, he and I. And when he used to say, and what he used to say still rings true. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hey, come on now, you're embarrassing me. And in front of this pretty little thing here, I figured because she was being hit on. It was probably him, because he's always dating people randomly. Like someone different. So, you two are old childhood friends, I see. That's so sweet. You two go ahead and catch up on old times. I'm gonna go check on my bike. Nice girl, that Desi. So, how have you been, Nick? Too busy, if you really want to know. I don't want to talk to him, but I guess I'll present the badge. What about this? Does anything come to mind? Listen, I'm a security guard. I'm not here to sell you juicy bits of info and chew the fat man. Funny. You had no qualms about selling samurai dogs just two years ago. Okay. Let's ask about Larry Butts to Larry Butts. I feel like with the way the bars are, it looks like he's being censored. So what have you been up to this whole time? It's been two years since I heard from you. What's with those clothes? You look... well... weird. Hey man, that's uncalled for. It's my uniform for my part-time job. But I can't believe it's been two years. They say time flies when you're having fun. Ha ha ha! 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 Well, what's wrong? Nick, I gotta tell you. Women. I don't trust them anymore. You got dumped again? Well, you know Benifer? I followed her all the way to Japan two years ago. That's where I met the famous Caddy Tom, and my whole life changed. Benifer? Caddy Tom? I never heard of either of them. Anyway, dude. Katie Tom chose Hollywood over me. Can you believe it? Well, actually. Anyway, sounds like you had quite the adventure. Damn, he got burned. What are these names or something? Women, they're so, so... Ah. Oh, but you're different, Maya. You're not like the rest. <laughs> okay. Looks like he's still the same old Larry. 
Why are you here? So what are you doing here anyway? Huh? What do you mean by that? I'm just a natural born nice guy, that's all. Well, actually, I picked this up last night while I was working. Is it the wallet of the other guy because he had to go there at 1 o'clock and it would prove that he's there because there's video footage but it's all part of a blackmail thing? So maybe it will eventually go to murder because if the other guy has video evidence that he was there, then that would disprove that he was masked to mask. So he, the guy that's... Who, whoever it is, I don't know if it's the head of security, the CEO or whatever, I would not be surprised if he dies <laughs> like the next two court days. Just gonna say, Chad, I'm gonna be like... I saw it coming. If only we could tell them to be more competent, maybe more murder could be prevented. A wallet? You say you found this last night? Yeah, it had a driver's license in it, so I figured I'd just return it myself. Ron's wallet, found by Larry to his part-time security jobs company building. Night of the crime. Well, Ron's wallet added to the court record. Hang on, let me see that for a minute. I knew it. Jesse's picture is in here. Yeah, I guess he really digs his wife, huh? Hey, Nick, it's not what you're, it's not what you're thinking at all. No, I'm pretty sure it is. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, uh, no way, man. I mean, she's a married woman. That's just bad news. He really is here just to check out Miss Delight. So you said you found it at your job, right? Yeah, I'm working for a private security company as a guard. Chicks just love a guy in uniform, you know? A security guard, huh? So that's what that uniform is all about. Wallet. So what time was it when you found this last night? <laughs> Ugh, from Chris indeed. Huh? Why are you asking that? Trying to see if I got an alibi? Um, you're not the one on the hook for a crime this time, buddy. I guess it was around one in the morning on the first floor of our company building. What was Miss Mr. Delight's wallet doing there? What do you mean, what was it doing there? What do you mean? <laughs> what, what? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Phoenix, did you get your head hit? Like, we, you just read this. If you don't, I'll take the red diamond you received the other day instead. Okay, I didn't see that part before. I'm glad we reread that. I'm throwing my hands in the air, chat. Man, he's dumb. Anyway, there's nothing weird about that. After all, he works there. He works there? You mean Mr. Delight? Yes, he told us he was a security guard. Sure. Here, take a look at this. It's right there in his wallet. What's this card? It's a key card for the security company. Kind of want to create a deep dive system for games so I can punch him. Wow. Galvisham's ready. See, it's got a serial number on it right there. There's no mistake about it. You said you're working part-time at a security company, right? That's right. Why are you making that scary face? Security company, huh? Something's not quite secure about Larry working there. I need to find out as much as I can about this key card. Key card. Found inside Ron's wallet. Apparently used for the building of his part-time job. Key card added to the court record. Okay. Um... Can I just present the same evidence back to him? I mean, he wouldn't know about the calling card. So he might have something to say about one of these three objects. We'll start with the blackmail letter. Oops. I keep forgetting you don't present that way, even though that's how you present other things in court. Let's try this first. Hey, Larry, what about this? What? I got something to say, then say it already. Huh? A blackmail letter? Do you know anything about this? W w what? I don't know anything about Alexis, and that's the truth. About Alexis? What? Huh? What? 
can't believe you'd do this to me. I thought you were my friend. $50,000? I don't have that kind of money. No, no, no. You don't understand. Why did he say Alexis? Wait. <laughs> I feel like going to rewatch that when I'm done with the stream where I'm like, was that supposed to be something else? You don't understand. This blackmail letter was sent to Ron Delight. Mew, man, you scared me. I almost had a heart attack, you idiot. Wait, I'm the idiot? Man, I was totally confused because it says KV Security right on the envelope. Um, yeah. So what? That's where I got a part-time job. It's KB Security. W what? Why is she wanting? I, I feel like I'm like... It, am I experiencing the game differently than they are? Like, what do you mean what? He just told you this. Sounds like you should really find out more about the KB Security Company. What? 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 He... He has, he has a giant badge that says KB on it. What? What? Huh? What, what, what do you What do you mean? I'm so confused. Did, is Is it because I did this out of order or something? But I mean, like, he's got a giant thing that says KB on it. Even if I didn't have the... Co uh, they're so stupid, I swear, chat. Present the wallet. You didn't touch anything in the wallet, did you? Hey, man, be serious. You know what I was interested in. If Master Mask doesn't look out, he's gonna be the victim of a robbery himself. Okay. Key card. Are you sure about this key card? Yup, that's the key card we used at the building I work in. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. Okay, so the CEO is the one blackmailing. Okay. I, I was like, it could be head of security or somebody else. So we're narrowing down who potentially will die in the next couple days, assuming they're not already dead, honestly. You needed to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. It's almost like that one time we kept swiping cards in the police department. Remember that in case one? Or the first game, I mean? It leaves a record? Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Larry, I need that data. Whoa, slow down, man. Sorry, but that data is out off limits to outsiders. Why is blind remember it's too dark and for, for her to see the KV? It's true. You're right. They need more light sources. I lost this job. I never have a chance with Desi. Wow. It's times like these when I wish lawyers weren't so powerless. What do you mean? Stop being friends with him. <laughs> Key card updated in the court record. And in Ron's wallet opens the KB security CEO's office. Leaves a record when used. Is there anything else I could talk to him about? Oh, KB security popped up. Oh, probably because I showed the wallet. KB security. The company in the blackmail letter. You know about it? <laughs> chat, chat, I feel like I'm like... I'm like looking around like... Hey, what? What? <laughs> Did, did I, like, hallucinate the words KV security in the earlier conversations? Holy. That's where I work, yeah. In fact, I'm on the job right now. Huh? So what are you doing here, then? Well, the boss is away right now, and you know what mice do when the cat's away? Yeah, yeah. Uh. Anyway, how far away is this company? Let me see. About 30 minutes by car. I guess, well, if you fly down the road anyway. Okay, so this is proving that if the photo was taken at 12.58, it's not possible for the wallet to have been there at 1 o'clock or even 1.15 because it takes too long to get there. So we're, we're now establishing that the photo is very, very fake. Hmm. Well, this apartment building is pretty close to Lordy... Lloyd Lee Taylor, right? It would take roughly an hour to go from here to KB Security and back. Ronda Light was at KB Security when the robbery occurred then. Whoa. And he couldn't have stolen the sacred urn. Hey, Nick. Your phone. Beep. Hello? Is this the right residence? Ah, uh, Pearls. Where are you? I thought I'd go to Lord Lee Taylor to try to find some more clues, but... Yeah, we just straight up let her wander the streets. 
I'm afraid I've gotten lost. What? Give me the phone, Nick. Hurley, where are you right now? Um, I was walking along and I found myself in front of that person's office. That person's? That person? Who? Um, the person who doesn't act as agent always says Savari when he's excited. Ugh. Now I know who she's talking about. Look at me, ace detective. Okay, stay right there. We're coming to get you. All right. I I'm a little scared. Beep. All right, let's go, Maya. Wait a second, Nick. What? That phone call just now. Sound like real cutie. I'm so disappointed on so many levels. I don't know if I'm more... I don't know if I'm more disappointed that the word A slash letter A is missing from that statement, but oh my gosh, gross. Dango says, leaving a child unsupervised, pretty sure that's child neglect. It for sure is. We just, we didn't even bother, like, she's not with any adult supervision. She's nine, as a reminder, not even like a teenager. Just nine roaming the streets. Who knows what time it is in the game. Another one of your ahem. Special friends? Ew. I would dot 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 dot. Say goodbye to Miss Delight for me, would you, Larry? Yeah, let's stop talking to Larry. Larry's kind of a problem. I like the weird detective bag slash... Almost something like a coroner slash doctor would have. October 12th, at me, detective agency. Ah, oh, Mr. Nick, Miss Sigmaya. Hurley. I never thought I'd see the two of you again. So is Mr. Ace Detective out of the office? Yes, when I arrived here, there wasn't a single soul in sight. Say, Nick, doesn't it look like something's changed since we were last here? I don't know. Gee, maybe is it the giant bag on the table? Now that you mention it. This bag. I'm sure it wasn't here before. Looks like full. I wonder what could be in here. Hey, Nick, come on. Open it up. Hey, wait a minute. We can't just open his private property. Phoenix, I swear if, like, the urn is in here, I'm gonna get so annoyed. Chat, you have no idea if this turns out to be the carrying bag after it's moved out of the box and we just refuse to open it. I will be very cross with the game. I'm just like, you know, chat, it better not be the urn. It better be something else. <laughs> I'm going to be really mad later. Because this is now twice. We had very obvious evidence that we just decided not to look at for no reason. Even though we were looking at his books and his bottles and his everything, basically. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. That's true. Truth be told, I have to admit I'm kind of curious. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Just of course. Even if it was, don't you remember evidence law? Damn, you're right, Dango. Dango at it again. And his books and his photo, this is at me virus, yeah. I've, he's gonna turn into Wesker or something midway through. Well, hello there! Ah! He's here! What are you doing, Sir Lawyer? I'm shocked to see a servant of the court ignoring the law so flagrantly. I'm really sorry. Maya made me do it. Nick, I can't believe you. A gentleman never uses a lady as an excuse for his own poor behavior. The real question is, can you afford to waste time lollygagging here? Yes. We literally don't case- we don't take cases basically ever. We have all the time in the world. What do you mean by that? Perhaps I should make myself more clear. Tomorrow's trial. Davari! Evidence Law is your favorite meme, it really is. Shall we say the figurative Sir William will be dropping his panties before lunchtime? I'm trying- I'm taking it in. That is... Quite a phrase.
Wow, Nick. Sounds like it's gonna be really exciting. I feel like that's a Money Python reference? It's been a while since I've seen it. it. I mean, he's definitely just stealing things from other people because he's a thief. Like, I'm pretty sure it was Sun Tzu he quoted earlier. Then the... Then he quoted something else that I for already forgot what it was. That that feels like Money Python to me, chat. Tomorrow's trial. Um, What's going to happen at the trial tomorrow? That's so dramatic. You know what your biggest mistake so far has been. Hmm. It has been... It was becoming a lawyer in the first place. That certainly does sound like a big mistake, Mr. Nick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like in this... Okay. Like, listen, chat. I watch a lot of British comedies. I will say it's probably in the episode with My Hovercraft is Full of Eels. I don't remember what episode that is. But I feel like it's that episode. If I, if I had to be more specific for Money Python... <laughs> I feel like he it's just kind of an offhanded reference to something that came out in the 70s. <laughs> just like, okay. I, I mean, I kind of know the reference. Alvisham saying gotta go. Good luck getting Penguin to Arkham. Yeah, exactly. Tomorrow will be a day to remember. I look at me will take the stand. And then Safari! My testimony will prove to be the undoing of you lot. I don't know if that is in reference to something that's like a real phrase. But that's what I know it from. Ah, yes, all of you. I will unmask you as the thief's co-conspirators. Yeah, the mistranslation books. Conspirators? <laughs> You're quick on the defensive, I see. However, it is not that it is... It is not I that is your greatest enemy. There is a far more dangerous threat that you will face during the trial. What are you talking about? Sir Lawyer, if you truly are who you say you are, I'm sure you've heard of him. His name is Godot. Godot? The mass identity. You've taken a step down the path of foolishness. Oh no, he's sounding like the whip lady more and more. To try to defend a career criminal deserves nothing less than the death penalty. Hey, last time I checked, no one knows for sure that Mr. Delight really is Damask. <laughs> My dear lady, times may change, but people sadly do not. Which is why you're probably a terrible person. Well, you will understand this when you're more mature. Godot. Um, who is this Godot person? It's not surprising that his spirit medium has not heard his name. Godot, the prosecutor whose equal cannot be found in this country, but in heaven. Godot, a legend or myth. Men pin a lifetime of hopes on the chance to simply meet him. Mm hmm. Prosecutor Cadell. But the best prosecutor in the country is in Cadell. It's Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, Nick? He's kind of not good at his job, to be real with you. It's a surprise that a spirit medium such as yourself would know nothing of this. Hmm. But Ace of Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth is currently traveling abroad. Huh? In fact, it was Mr. Edgeworth who acknowledged Godot as the best in this country. Can you agree with that? 
Most certainly. In fact, you could call him Luke Admi of the prosecutor's office. Oh, call him the Luke Admi of the prosecutor's office. My bad. Well, that's good to hear. The prosecution has a fighting chance tomorrow. Mr. Nick, is this Godot really that strong? Hmm. I seem to remember hearing about someone like that. Not surprising. Some people spend their entire lives idly waiting for his appearance. Looks like we're done investigating for the day. Hmm. <laughs> Is there a lawyer? Hmm. The stage has been set and all the pieces are finally in place. Something a very normal person would say. Definitely not a villain. Hmm. All that remains now is for the dance to begin. New prosecutor. Nice detective and a thief. This will be one tough trial. Okay. Be continued. So they're introducing a new character. Okay. Well, he said he heard it before. I'll think about that. I'll think about it, Chad. I don't have any opinions right now. Maybe when I see Godot... I have an opinion. I'm assuming we... I think we saw an image of him, or there's an image on the game box. I'm assuming it's going to be the guy with the visor. But, you know, we'll we'll see more. October 13, 9.36 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. Hey, Nick! What is it? Is something wrong? Nah, but you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out the mess to mess glossy I bought. Glossy? Got a glossy photo? You bought this where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. Hmm. You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Hmm. Trying to mess the mask, I can oppose. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yes, I did. It doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it. I'm the criminal. Me, me, me. Ugh. He's at it again. He sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor. I admit it. But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean I didn't commit the crime. Normally, when I say of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you? Yikes. Anyway, admit that I'm guilty. I'm thinking chat will play at least the first part of the trial. We'll see where it goes from there. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict, please. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, Desi, honey. Bonjour. Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Uh, uh, well, uh, you see, actually, the thief is, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee my Ronnie is innocent. He's declared guilty. I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck. I feel like she has like Yugi boy vibes going on with her lines. To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is masked to mask or not. I'm telling you, chat, if I was in this universe, solved on day one, I'm telling you. <laughs> right, chat? It'd be like, book them. <laughs> but there's only one thing I am sure of. No, it's Ami. <laughs> he doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree.
October 13, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number six. Bang. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Okay, so it is him. Unknown dot 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 dot. Interesting that he has a black beard but white hair. Hmm. Very interesting. I don't know what kind of voice to give him yet. I think we have to... I've got to feel out some lines for him. Like, at least the other games, I've seen them at a time. I don't really know what I should do to voice him. Hmm. The other characters, I just felt something. But I don't know if he's going to be, like, a jokester, serious... I guess we'll see in the first few lines. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. What did you say? Fine. Let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? Well, no, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um... Who are you? I am Godot. Ooh, that music. How come they always talk about never losing a case? It's okay to lose a case. I don't respect you less, prosecutors. I am Godot, legendary prosecutor. I have never lost a case. Ah, uh, he's the one that Detective Atme was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Ha, huh. none. Wait, what? What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. What? <laughs> N never? What? But you said you've never lost before. Oh, we're getting hit by the technicality here? Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. This court system sucks. <laughs> Seriously? How did you get... Okay, so if I'm going to take what he's saying literally, it's saying that he was previously maybe a defense attorney? Because he obviously probably knows the law before this point, one would hope. Is the visor actually like going to turn out to be like a medical thing or something weird in their weird universe that this is somehow normal like not one person has mentioned the visor this is really freaking me out chat why are we not talking about the visor quite arrogant for a beginner aren't you even the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings yes but a mask in a court of law oh somebody finally mentioned it huh don't you know anything no matter the man, we all wear masks, either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy is the real deal, all right? Oh, excuse me, rephrase it. This guy is the real deal, all right, Nick. Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So, we finally meet Mr. Phoenix Trite. Ooh, that's a good one. Nick? Is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me trite. Just who is this masked man? Oh. Did, did they mean to spoil this? I, oh, I think I know who this is then. Wait, <laughs> I kind of wish they didn't tell me this. Okay, Chad, if at any point he starts having a coffee cup, I'm just gonna be like, he was technically introduced in the first case we played earlier, I think. So, if you remember from the first case, there was, uh, everything revolved around the coffee being poisoned, right? And that they, that the, or, 
but was it for a lawyer or a pro I, was it a lawyer or a prosecutor now i don't remember from the first case but the whole reason why that other lady uh, lady hawthorne was there was she was suspected of poisoning somebody and then she got the poison away with phoenix wright so if everybody assumes he died this line would make sense if it's this person I'm not sure why he specifically hates Phoenix yet. Question mark. I mean, it could be a thing where, like, if it is him and him and Mia had a relationship, maybe that's why there's some animosity. I'm not really sure. I feel like I wish the game didn't tell me this, because that's what I'm immediately thinking when I read this. But anyway. I think it's a little heavy with the foreshadowing, is what I'm saying. To do battle with you. Well then, uh, pr Prosecutor Gobo. It's not Gobo. It's Godot, your honor. It's another pen pal of the Grim Reaper. Yeah, you're right. In any case, please give your opening statement. See, this is something where, like, I wish he didn't say anything until later in the game. Then it would have been, like, a big reveal. But the fact that he said it so early, I'm just going to be thinking about the rest of the game. I don't even know who else it would be, based off the previous case, too. Opening statement. Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What is it? Are you familiar with the saying? A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. I wonder. Oh, see, he's even doing the... Oh, see, he's even, like, holding a mug in his pose. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely this guy. <laughs> the foreshadowing is too intense for me, Chad. I'm sorry. Like, because, like, I just said, like, he's going to be drinking coffee, right? He's got, like, the grip going. Like, his fingers are around the handle. And his thumb is, like, on the top of it. Oh, totally see it, Chad. I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break in two. Well, anyway, mystery solved there, I guess. Bang. Hmm. Well, then, let's hear from the first witness. Oh, not Gumshoe. Um, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Uh... The important thing is what you know. That's all. Start talking. We're listening. I yes, sir. All right, witness. First, let's hear about what you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes, sir. Is I ah oh, see now I want to go rewatch the first part. I had a feeling like Hawthorne was gonna come up again at some point because it's kind of setting it up that like events of the past come into the present. So like I was always like slightly vaguely on it, but I don't remember how they described the victim because they called him uh. What did they call him? It was Diego Armando. Is that some stupid pun on his name where it's like Diego Armando? So if you combine his first and last name, it's Godot. You know what? I'm convinced that's it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking about it. I'm pretty sure, Chad. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, I'm sure that'll come up in like two cases or whatever for confirmation. Uh, mask to Mask Crimes. <clears throat> Master Mask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Master Mask, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm... So then, the actual identity of this mask de mask is... Mr. Godot, what are you? Oh, well, pfft. Well, I guess if we had any... Any question at all, Chad. <laughs> if, uh... If he was holding a coffee mug. We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than a moonless night. Hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. Yes, sudden coffee break. I'm sure you could grant me at least 
this much your honor. Oh, please, proceed. And why is it like his arms are tied down? Like, what's up with that? Like, why are the belts around the arms? So I'm imagining because he was poisoned, it damaged him? Like his eyesight or something, and that's why he wears the visor? I guess the hair somehow has to do with the two? I don't know if the arm things do anything, though. It almost reminds me like he's in a straitjacket. <laughs> he's like, oh, yes. I escaped from the hospital. I put a little vest over this and pretended I was a prosecutor. Chris is saying, I like how the judges issue with drinking coffee during trial, but not whipping someone during trial. Yeah, the judge is pretty nonsense. Very well. It's only coffee after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity. All we could do is show that it wasn't Master Mass who stole the urn. Hmm. Master Max crimes. Hmm. So I'm gonna read it again. The Master Thief that first started his crimes three six months ago. Mm-hmm. So company sends his calling card before he commits the crime. This was his fifth heist. He sent a card. His parents always go after the most precious art pieces. So maybe I can present something to prove that it was worthless. But did we get a statement saying this was worthless? Like, can I just present this here? Or do I need... Maybe I have to press him first. Let's press him first. Hold it! Art pieces? Like what, for example? Well, his first target was the famous Tira Eminon. What's that? Some kind of especially salty teardrop? No, no, sir. It's a blue diamond. A single rare diamond. Next was the crown of Bongora. You know, the thing you put on your head. After that was the left hand of Hades. And then the portrait of Magina. Maybe he stole Patrick Lee's relationship upgrade chat. It was him. Detective Abney retrieved the portrait of Magina, returned it to the museum. And the target of his fifth and last robbery was the Sacred Urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have had some underworld connections. Somehow, Mr. Delight doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. Okay, so that didn't lead to more ones. So let's just directly present the evidence here then, because we already know it's priceless. Oh, but, well, excuse me. Supposedly priceless, but it's no monetary value. So let's present it here directly as a counterpoint. Objection. Objection! Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. What do you mean? Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Master Mass would normally go after. Ugh. Hmm. If I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Master Mask. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get the issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Mask to Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? This coffee here. My own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity 
or the bitterness. I feel like this is a metaphor for the trial. That's the only thing I've got on my mind right now, Mr. Trite. What? You're really a man. You should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. You're saying it wasn't mass to mass that stole the urn. Then it must be someone imitating mass to mass methods. A fake. A fake mass to mask. Fake mass to mask? That sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. Is he getting served another coffee? Where are they coming from? Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Bang. Hmm. Though I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. Looks like I'm gonna have to prove it. I need to prove that person at Lordly Taylor that night was indeed a fake mask to mask. Um. Okay. So I'm looking at this. There's pink all over him. Is that supposed to be him mid-crime? Let's compare that to... The security photo. He's got like the big thing in the middle. Ah, uh, yeah, his outfit is wrong. Okay. Interesting. I thought some pieces of the outfit were missing, but yeah, there. More importantly, his whole centerpiece is wrong. He doesn't have like that big weird devil thing on his face in particular, like right in the center of his chest. So maybe I could get away with presenting this directly. Take that. Take that. And use the other photo as evidence. The proof is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you notice something peculiar about it. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? It's a summon, it's true. Go on. Oh, it said use this pointer and point it out. So I think I just point to his collar directly. Take that! Take that. It's right here, of course. You mean mess to mask? Have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security photo is the brooch on Damas' chest. A breach? Here? Bailiff, get my steed. We need to retreat at once. Get my steed? What? I hope he's referring to a car and not a literal horse, but okay. A uh, brooch, Your Honor. It's a sort of class for holding one's cape on. A class, B. Eh? Oh, I see now. I mean, this judge is probably ultra senile if we're going based off of the timeline that we're further along than the prior cases. But the mask to mask in the security camera photo. Ah, he has no brooch. That brooch is the same as the emblem on the Damask calling card, and serves as a symbol. Is it? Is it? It doesn't look the same. Wait, no it's- wait, no it's not. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, so it has like the, the split down the middle. But it's- but it's not? Oh, I can't see the image up close. Did they... Were they supposed to be the same? They're not drawn the same. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. No, it's... Unless they mean... Unless they don't mean literally on the letter. But the way they said it, it makes it seem like the thing on the card is the same thing, because it's not. Colors are wrong. The dots are wrong. The face is wrong. 
<laughs> just like I'm assuming maybe there maybe he means somewhere deeper inside that if you open it up it shows it. Maybe that's what he's referring to. Let's give the game the benefit of the doubt, but I got very confused when he called it that. The thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this mask to mask is a fake. I've been fooled again! Bang. Order! It's true! Undeniably true! Detective Gumshoe! How... how could you have overlooked this? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I... I think he's gonna die of, like, caffeine overdose or something. I'm kind of worried about Godot chat. Hey now, you're gonna have me have a pity party. Invite me too. Mr. Godot, you deserve some blame in this too. Is going back to hospital at this rate? I think so. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh, the brooch you're talking about. Do you mean this? Ah, that's... Master Mass Brooch. Where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I've got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? You must mean Ami Fei statue. Well, why didn't you tell me about. Oh, excuse me. Why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. <laughs> These people... Okay. Mistrial! Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> evidence tampering! <laughs> dot, 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 indeed. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. No, it's not. Your pocket is not the safest spot. It should be in, like care from somebody else probably some bags for preservatives there's so many other places it should be uh this guy is one cool customer it's just his music maya don't fall for it oh my gosh another coffee cup a little early to be shaken up isn't it little lady that friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there too Hickeys? Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. Doesn't he wear gloves? Man, this trial is full of holes. From the prosecutor's side, not, not the story so far. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch. Unless they don't mean covered in paint or something, then whatever. If it's just fingerprints in general, maybe that makes sense. Bang. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Godot, let me see that brooch. I've gotten attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Metallic girlfriend? What? Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have been torn off of some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. The mass brooch found in the shadow of Amy Face statue looks like it was torn off with some clothing. Added to the court record. Huh. You mess with Godot. And you get burned. Sure you're not gonna burn yourself drinking the coffee? I mean, I don't even see you checking the temperature. Ugh, he's been playing me like a violin. To be, to be fair, Phoenix, I think most people can. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> Bang. Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh?
One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Just silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What's clear? Savari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? I mean, these aren't really deductions. It's kind of super obvious. Well, yes, that's right. Ha. Huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. What do you mean, not bad? What? And the first person's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Atme, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, those two make a perfect pair. They either be best friends or they tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe was worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. If only we could guess, chat. Bang. Well then... Tell us what this special monocle of yours witnessed. Witness testimony, what I witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the day changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mastamats, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Oh, you're not gonna say that you struggled with him? Oh, well that's easy. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal. My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, Sir Oldtimer, let me explain. We're not speaking of any ordinary thief, but of the King of Thieves, the great mask to mask, my arch enemy. That is what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm, very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Oh, let me get a drink real quick. Man, it's hard to fluctuate between other people and the judge. <laughs> It's like, but that's fine. Well, I mean... I'm gonna press and then present. I don't know if it's necessary to present or press here, but I'll say hold it here anyway. You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened? Well, that's di the difficult part. How, I, how should I put it? I saw this mask. That's all I can recall. Hmm. That's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However... Fortunately, I had my third monocle, the security camera at the ready. It captured his image perfectly. This should be sufficient, I believe. Hmm. Well, as long as this photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, but if it's not authentic, Judge? Well, Mr. Godot, do you have a problem with the photo? Good. Then let's continue with the testimony. 
So I guess we'll present the badge that was just torn off like a fight occurred, but then he didn't say a fight occurred. Objection! Objection! Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha! Uh -huh. This belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Mastermask! It is, in point of fact, Mastermask brooch! It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. Ha! Huh. Elementary, my dear lawyer. Okay, Sherlock Holmes. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. Clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! Uh -huh. We can only deduce the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. There's only one person that was in a position to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, detective at me. Ugh! Bang. Detective at me, you must have fought with the thief that night. So, why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime that I choose not to prosecute or really follow up on in any of our previous cases. Something something evidence law. Alright, no no! Wait just a moment, sir, old timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. I mean, you kind of are. You're very senile. <laughs> I just remembered, your honor. I was just confused. I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is in the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much. Oof. Bang. Witness, so are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, your honor. Excuse me? Oh, look, there's more coffee. Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I look at me c c agree completely. Witness testimony, fight with the thief. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, look at me cannot be so easily discombobulated. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam. And that's all she wrote. I mean, he still didn't really amend the statement. So in the end, did you catch a glimpse of Master Mask? Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. It seems my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes with which case. Please retire this man. Put his pay pay for him to go somewhere. He's gonna get all these people killed, chat. <laughs> please, please, Phoenix Universe, retire this judge. That can't be good. Yeah, he definitely needs to retire. Cross examination fight with the thief. Okay, so let's go through one at a time. Looked away. I mean. <sighs> So I have a feeling something I might need might be between these three statements. I'm gonna start with the rendered me senseless. Maybe if he talks about what happens with the weapon, I can prove him wrong. We'll, we'll press on this one first. Hold it! What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, the thief had no idea that I, Luke at me, was in hiding in the area. 
He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. Sword? In the sword that was twisted like a tree branch? Correct. Unfortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Oh, excuse me. Fortunately for me. Okay, so he's talking about this. Chi. 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 Shido. So the thief armed himself with a sword. What about yourself, witness? I mean, I can ask him. Okay, I'm gonna skip this one. Let's go to this one. Hold it. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was po both powerful and vicious. You might say he was power vicious. Power vicious, Chad. Power vicious. I assume they had me fighting sense, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. I'm sorry, the what? What do I do now? Should I ask him more about this? I'm kind of curious about the blinded, but also, I really want to hear him describe the Atme fighting style a bit more. Do I have, have a guy in game one that made up compound words like that? I think so. Yeah, that was for the extremely stupid character. That was pretending to be all of that. You are correct, that was from the first game. What is this Atme fighting style? Sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say any more. But I suppose I could tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Well, Mr. White, what about that testimony? I'll say it's very important. Of course it's important. Learn a detective's secret technique after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Bang. Now then, witness. We'll go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony. Okay, that's, that's a good sign. So is there something I could do with it? I don't know what he means by his third eye. I thought he was talking about the security camera when he talked about it. Is, is this also a phrase? I just don't know. My third eye. I feel like I'm supposed to know what this means, but I don't know what this means. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, chat. I feel like it wants me to do something with this, but I don't know what the sentence means. Right, like you think third eye, like you wake into the third eye is in your psychic. I'm assuming with him specifically, he called his monocle one of his eyes. Is he referring to... I hate when characters speak like this chat. It makes it so much more confusing than it should be. Um, Let's look at our evidence again. So, so one thing I'm a little confused by, I mean, I'm gonna present this. So the weapon itself says, knock that me out during a crime with a blow to the back of the head. But we don't have, we didn't really establish that this was true. So, like, I think what it's trying to establish is saying that he got hit in the back of the head, which wouldn't be possible because his back was to the wall, which is why he amended the statement. I just don't understand how that sentence he just spoke also then ties into this when we didn't establish the evidence did this. I'm going to present it. I'm assuming this is what it wants, but I feel a little confused by the verbiage here again. Objection! Detective Atme, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. 
What fun this is, Sir Lawyer. It truly is a pleasure to cross swords with you. He has three eyes, me and has no eyes. That me should share, pretty much. And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. So now we're bringing up testimony not related to what he just said. I feel like this is kind of a stretch. I feel like this also wouldn't be allowed in court, by the way. We're like, hey, remember that thing you did out of court a day ago? Remember how you didn't sign it with like an affidavit or anything or get it approved as official witness testimony? Yeah, we're just going to bring it up here and see if we get away with it because screw the rules, apparently. Anyway, let's go read what he has to say again. Like, he's the one who updated it, so it's like, I just find it really weird. We're like, aha, but you said it hit you in the back of your head, and then he could just say, no, I didn't. And then the line of questioning ends there because that happened outside the courtroom. This feels like a very flimsy case to me. I'm just saying, chat. Just be like, no, I'm not testifying to that that happened. If I said that yesterday, I was mistaken. Bam. Testimony destroyed. You wouldn't get anywhere. With like zero thought, his whole strategy falls apart. But I guess it's Phoenix, right? So I guess he'll confess or something stupid. No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with the gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now you testi testify that he struck you on the forehead. Oh, is that what it means by the third eye being hit in the forehead? I is that what that's supposed to mean? I would not have interpreted it as that, to be honest, chat. But whatever, we're gonna shrug our shoulders. I feel like the writing in this case is a little weird. I don't know if it's like a translation thing or what's going on. There's just like a lot of really off phrases. Hardly think you could forget where you were, where you were hit on the head. I mean, I guess to be fair, like, third eye, I normally think forehead. But it's like him saying it makes less sense because he calls other things his eyes. Oh, well. Ugh, it seems I've, I've made another mistake. Detective at me. That's not the only strange part of your testimony. I mean, you could just say his whole testimony is strange. What do you mean by that? For example, the very fact you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Ugh! Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's wrong. Ooh, his voice is very deep. Objection to air is human. To forgive divine. So I guess I was kind of right in deepening his voice a bit, but it is very deep there. Humans aren't machines. They have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate. And yes, they even make mistakes. Objection. Objection. Hey, hold on. It's not as pretty as that. Slam that coffee mug. Really? What is it like then? Yeah, it is an objection or whatever that game was in the first game. <laughs> that first game was ridiculous. Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. Bang. Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... Mr. Atme is no ace detective. That one is kind of tempting. That this Mr. Atme is a fake. Mr. Atme is mask to mask. I mean, yeah. Let's say that. It's technically true. At least from what I'm gathering of the evidence anyway. We'll see if the case throws another twist. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke Atme's true identity is actually mask to mask. Yeah! 
Oh, that was a face. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts in Mr. Atme's story. It says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. That's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up on clues the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that, detective at me. The truth is that you are, in fact, Master Mask. Ah! But, but Mr. Wright, this photo, it clearly shows Master Mask. This security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. Is this true, witness? Uh -huh. <laughs> Tabascamo is a pure genius, and so am I. Look at me, ace detective. You're very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I'm impressed, sir lawyer. What? Witness you. You're admitting it. Nick, now's your chance. Yes. Time to put the nail in this guy's coffin. Last nail, excuse me. Detective at me. When you assume the thief's identity... Objection? Did he throw... He did throw. Well, that's a goofy face. So, this is where they uh, handcuff Godot. They declare mistrial. <laughs> <laughs> right, chat? They suspend court for the day. Of course not, it's Phoenix, right? Godot blend number 102. My personal favorite. Mr. Godot. The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points and I... Wow, he's actually siding with us early in a case? Is this a first? Parameter says, since he's going to the hospital, it'll take Phoenix with him with burns. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of whole cloth. But it is, in fact, Nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Yeah, we should definitely sue him for possibly like third degree burns. I'm just saying, chat, like this seems like a very easy case to win. I mean, Phoenix could try himself, you know, be the attorney for himself on the defense. He'd save himself money. Bang. One, one of the few times where pro se would probably make sense. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see this decisive proof you have quickly. Huh? Oh, yeah, of course. What's the big rush? Are you all right, Nick? And me looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can. And we went from the courtroom having coffee slash on our faces and the worst we've experienced, true. Can I really do it? There's such evidence that proves Mr. Luke at me is in fact Damask. I mean, do I have anything that ties him? I don't think so. So. Okay, so what's missing so far? We don't have the urn. So if he had the urn in his possession, that would prove it there. If he had a costume, 
we proved he had a costume that would be evidence. If we had more proof that the other person couldn't possibly be it, that would be evidence. And we sort of have Ron's wallet for that, as well as the key card. So I have a feeling investigation phase is going to be going to the CEO's office to prove he was there and get a record that he was indeed there. So I'm going to lean to no, which is kind of rare in a Phoenix, right, to say. I'm going to say he's yet to be found. There are far bigger jailable offenses we've seen here. Yeah, this this judge sucks. Roof, of course I... I... I've got nothing. Ah, just what I thought. A man has to hold his head up high, no matter how bad things get, after all. Ah. Uh, I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this guy is the thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But are you going to just give up and lose this? So you've come to your senses, have you, Sir Lawyer? I... Uh, oh, I can't think of a counterattack at all. Bang. It seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have any further to add, hold it. Who? Who are you? And that doesn't really matter right now, does it? Mr. Light, what are you doing here? Nikki boy, the thing you've been looking for. I think I found it. Oh. Oh, oh, come on. No, seriously, it was really... Oh, oh Phoenix got... To, uh, Phoenix! <laughs> Phoenix, this case would be over. Case would be over. You're so stupid. <laughs> no, it's the bag from earlier. I said I'd get so annoyed if it was. Come on. This is so stupid. Swear, chat. Swear. The jar is in here. Come on. Phoenix, please. <sighs> Fine. What is in it? You mean that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well, that's, that's the sacred urn. Nick, it's the urn. Wow, they really wrecked this urn. Oh. Wait. Wait, the urn spelled correctly? They broke their urn again? No. What ha- No. It's no longer I am. No. Rip. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. You, madam. That urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective. Look at me. And this is no longer admissible in court because we didn't turn it over to the police and we'd have to believe your testimony. Oh, Desi, you're the best. I mean, this shouldn't even be allowed. What happened to evidence law, chat? I know, I am face legacy's gone. Exactly. Rip evidence law. Sacred and found in the office to look at me has big splotches all over it. Oops. I'm guessing the cheap box... Maybe what it is is because Maya made the box, it was cheap, and it fell out of the box, and they had to reassemble it. I imagine that's probably what happened. But we'll see. I guess we'll figure out how it got destroyed at some point. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Atme? Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. The state's planted evidence. Say she had it and she's the thief. This is easy. I started to think the evidence law case was a fever dream. It definitely is. Evidence law. Objection. Objection. Huh. Pathetic. Mr. Godot, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, your honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. 
You're still denying that Mr. Atme was involved before casting aspersions at Detective Atme. Consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight. Is that correct? Yes. What about it? Ha. Ah, how charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. What are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere. Thank you, Godot. Point out the easiest flaw in bringing this here. I'm sadly on his side. This was really stupid to do. Slam. Including the office of the good detective here. Bang. So, you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you... Found it. What? I just brought it here from the detective's office. Please, madam. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong. I would never, I would never do such a thing. Miss Delight, please, Nicky boy, you've got to help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Ern was actually in the Atme Detective Agency. Um... Ooh, this is actually- this is actually the closest it's been to an interesting choice in the Phoenix games in a while. Because, like, testify about what I saw is true, but I don't think it would get you anywhere. Show fingerprints on the urn. Risky? And, or I can't prove anything yet because I'm not decisive on this. I think this is the first time where, like, I could see people answering any of these three. The other ones were, like, pretty obvious which one it is, but I, I actually like this one. Um... Well, I mean, I guess if there's fingerprints on the urn, it would make sense to show them. Even if it... Even if it has the other guy's fingerprints on it... It still might clear him in a weird way, because he had gloves on, when would he touch it, yada yada. Eh, let's go for it. Worst thing that happens is I just choose I can't prove anything yet afterwards. I don't think testifying will work, because... Again, like, from the logical sense, it's just hearsay, so he just has to say no, and then that whole testimony falls apart. So maybe if it gets fingerprinted, this would potentially interrupt the trial. Which would make sense if we're coming into our first break. I can prove where the urn was. By the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Oh, come now. Now you're really making me laugh, Sir Lawyer. Fingerprints, indeed. May I go on? Good. Now, it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. Oh, unless... Oh, uh oh, oh. Well, well, he, he said urn versus bag, because I can prove I touched his bag, right? Is that where it's going? Maybe that's where it's going? Because we did technically touch it earlier. In any case, I'm always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. Unless... Unless that scene where we were trying to figure out what... Oh, no, 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 because he said it was hard and smooth. So maybe he did actually put his hand in there. I wasn't sure if he put his hand in the bag or not. Okay, so if, if, if in that scene he was putting his hand in the bag versus feeling what was in it on the outside, then maybe Phoenix's fingerprints would be there. Maybe that's what it meant. Maybe I misunderstood a scene earlier, which... I guess I'll blame me on that one. I'll, I'll take the blame on that one. If that's where it's going, I think I understand what it wants. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. And I feel the fact that he's emphasizing his fingerprints aren't there would tell me I'm probably just going to select myself if given a chance. 
What about it, Mr. Wright? This witness's fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. Nick, what are you gonna do now? I've come too far to turn back now. Although, honestly, we also technically touched the urn before then, so I feel like it's kind of a catch-22, sort of. Or maybe we didn't touch it in the second game? Maybe it's possible. Abby must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. I'm gonna select myself. Take that! So what is all this fuss about fingerprints anyway? Mr. Atme, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey Nick, come on, open it up! Oh, I'm taking it out now. I forgot he said that line. Okay. So that's important. I missed that one line, I think. I've said it, but I forgot about it. It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at the time. But, I did touch what was inside. What? You touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. Well, uh, that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints on that urn. My fingerprints are on there. And then it proves that the urn was in Detective Atme's office. Objection. Objection. Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Okay, so Godot's now asking... Okay, I kind of like Godot's reasoning so far, because we could have touched it back in the second game, and that's what I was thinking about. And maybe he's thinking of the same thing? Of course it does. What did you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. Oh, because she polished it. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, I was, I was also just remembering that testimony. Okay, so that, that rules out the second game then. I was slowly catching up to what the game wants, at least for this particular piece of evidence. I already think I know about the whole crime, but <laughs> we're catching up into the details currently. Yeah, she thought she could make it more valuable. Mm-hmm. Godot is smart except his coffee consumption, exactly. She polished it that much. She must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it was after that. And that was yesterday at the Atme Detective Agency. Ah, this blend, Godot blend number 107. I've decided it's a little too bitter after all. Is this visor smoking? He should probably go see a doctor. That can't be good for his face. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait, wait a moment, your honor. There's no need for that. No need, you say? Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. What are you... Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> what are you saying? Yes, I finally broken him down. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Well, that's a face. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius. I was forced to create one by myself. Is, is he? Is he declaring he's guilty this early? Here I am, the tragic clown! No, you're you're penguin. We talked about this before. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only Mask to Mask. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my little performance. <laughs> I had a feeling he would laugh like that, to be real with you, chat. There's something about his face. Well, Mr. Godot, what is Mr. Atme's condition? He's still in the lobby. Laughing insanely, Your Honor. Wow, that was fast. I wish I could... I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Bang. 
Okay, so this is way too easy. Clearly... Clearly it's gonna be something like he's going to be accused of stealing the urn to hide the fact that he killed somebody. Is that what it is? Is it gonna be like a like a double jeopardy or like a catch-22? Like, I can't both be the thief and the murderer because it's so-and-so. Is that where they're trying to go with this? Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Judge, funny enough, this is probably the closest you've been to not accusing somebody of being guilty immediately. I will say, chat, this is the closest the judge has been to being on our side slash even out of all the cases. It must be the senility. Besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight wasn't really the thief. Or really wasn't, excuse me. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. I'm waiting for a hold it. That was inevitable. You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. Or, um, I mean... Okay, so he needs to do it because of blackmail. So we have to eventually probably investigate the CEO's place to figure out about the blackmail and the diamond. Then maybe we have to find the red diamond that was mentioned in the note. Where was the note? So yeah, we probably need to find one of these things or find proof that this was here. So we'll probably have to go to security footage. You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. I, I mean, not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I was really trying to say. Oh no, he's not. This can't be happening. The thief, the sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me, it's I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty, please. Da, 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 da. I don't know what kind of kangaroo court you all think this is, but I mean, to be fair, the court is basically like a circus. Objection! Objection. The true identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass, judge. What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Godot, don't just stand there drinking coffee. Huh. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y y yes sir? If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I I'm sorry. I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you're a mess to mask, then prove it. That's what it means. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kind of cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. No, he really is. Oh, whatever, it's fine. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in his life. To become a man. Dude? I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm gonna go with, it's called time, but whatever. I know that. I, I won't fail, I swear. Okay then, talk. We're all listening. I guess that's his catchphrase, we're all listening. Remember kids, drinking a coffee is more rude and excusable than aggressively ripping somebody exactly. Oh well, let's all have a little listen to this confession. Mass to mask identity, witness testimony. The truth is, I've been mass to mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm actually... I'm not actually mass to mask, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look. See right there in the photo, that's me. It's from my brooch. Sank down the door handle and it got torn off, that's all. Hmm. I don't like the direction this trial has taken. Me neither, Judge. But this is how every trial goes. At least with me, anyway. Yeah, that's also true, Phoenix. Huh. 
You're doing great. <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Cadeau. You're embarrassing me. Like I said, you've only one you're only going to get one chance to testify, alright? I mean, isn't that not true? Usually we bring back witnesses multiple times. But if you make it through with this if you make oh, excuse me, let's try this again. But if you make it through this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise too. Keep your promise. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true mask the mask. Thanks so much, Mr. Cadeau. I, I'll do my best. All right, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid it's time for the cross-examination. Uh... Okay. So imagine I have to press or present something here. Let's start by pressing. Hold it. Hold it. Um... I thought you were going to be the one to show us the proof. You know, that you're the real Master Mask and not just some kind of obsessed fanboy. Hey now, that's not fair. Why do I have to do all the hard work anyway? Maybe because you're the one making the outrageous claim for a change? Come on, Nick. You know that Mr. Delight couldn't have committed the crime. You're the one with the fancy law degree. It's time to put it to work already. I need some kind of proof that Ron couldn't possibly be Master Mask. Well, I guess if we had that kind of proof, we wouldn't still be here, would we? For the time being, maybe we need to shift strategy. Try to show that Mr. Light couldn't have stolen the urn. Anyway, I... I mean, the problem with this is that... Like, I want to present this, but this isn't literally the... Re so I don't know if the game is going to get mad at me. Because we've had this happen before, where things talk about, like... E even in the earlier games, like when we had the ID badges, if you tried showing the ID badge instead of literally the records, the game would get mad at you. We don't have the records on us, but at the same time, I'm not sure what else we would present other than this. So I feel like from like a Phoenix Wright standpoint, this particular clue is a little confusing. So from our standpoint, we haven't actually discussed it or been to the office yet, but in theory, when it was swiped in, it would prove that the card was there and we could prove the card was there because of the wallet. And then we can also potentially get testimony from Larry Butts. And we also have the, the letter. So it's like, is this good enough of a lead to start on is where I don't feel confident having played the other games where this was not the solution. So, I mean, in those same cases, you would present the key card and then the records. You never went straight to the records. You worked your way forward to prove he had the card. Then you associated that card number with the records. Because if you remember, they were doing the thing where we had to prove that, you know, let's try to figure out his number based off the records. And that was from the first game. I mean, it doesn't seem to be penalizing me if I present something. So I might as well present it. Objection! Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Ah, oh, yes, it does. I lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when you find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Ah, oh, no. No, understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice you'd lost your wallet? Wait, what? What? Wait, what? <laughs> didn't I? Wait, I pre wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I pres- Didn't I present the key card, but it's talking as though I presented the wallet? What? <laughs> wait, I'm actually- I know it said it's found in his wallet, but- Whatever. We're, we're just gonna continue. Uh, let's see. I think it was on the night of the crime. But I know he still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1 a.m. at KB Security Headquarters. What? Did I, like, mi Like, I'm, I have an honest question. Did I accidentally select the wallet and I unintentionally did it right? Or did I select the key card and that presented as though I presented the wallet? Okay, uh, maybe these two do the same thing? Uh, okay, 
that's that's fine <laughs> that's why i was a little confused so maybe maybe the game felt bad if i didn't select the wallet but the key card mentions the wallet oh whatever let's not think about it too hard what surely you're not serious yes i am serious this proves that mr delight was in fact at kb security that night no so if the defendant was at KB security at one o'clock in the morning that proves that he was has a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lordly Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car. Well, according to Larry, anyway. Bang. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have anything to say? I guess that works. And stop drinking that coffee. Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the one who calls me Thief, Mr. Godot. Oh, you're the only one who calls me Thief. Excuse me. All right, I'll try. I'll do it. I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. Yeah, he's like a kid at his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why don't I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Okay, now we can tie in the letter. Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there and not at the heist. Planted it there? He's really reaching now. Mr. Delight, you probably dropped your wallet when you took out, took it out to use this, didn't you? The key card to KB Security CEO's office. No! Ugh, oh, that was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, You've overlooked one small thing. What? Motive, of course. Bang. Why would this thief go to KV security in the middle of the night anyway? Hmm. <laughs> well, Mr. White, looks like you need some evidence after all. Ah, uh, this stupid kid. Bang. Now then, let's see your evidence. The evidence that shows why Mr. Delight went to KB Security at 1 in the morning. I'm just going to present the letter then. Take that. Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Ah, uh, th that's... What is it? A blackmail letter. That's what it looks like from the contents. Blackmail? Yes. Basically, it says, bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, all right. The time of the theft, Mr. Delight was dealing with the blackmailer himself in KB Security's CEO office, full half hour away from the scene of the crime. I've been grabbing the coffee mug and then... Oh, he's glugging it. No, no, no! Bang, bang, bang. Fire in the eyes, then he's downing more coffee. Order! 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 Black veil, but it looks green to me. I like that. So when the theft of the urn occurred, the defendant was at KB Security. It looks like the perfect case for the defense. Objection. You may see it as a perfect case, Judge, but to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot blend number 107 impresses me a lot more. What are you trying to say? You say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company, but did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no, I guess not. Yeah, this is what I was wondering about before. So I guess Godot's on my line of thinking at the moment. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof. I'm not sure what I think of that. Not sure what I think of that. At least I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim the defendant entered the CEO's office, but you will need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're gonna have to track down the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trite? There is someone else who could testify. So this is the person who could testify the key card was used at 1 a.m. that night. And it was Mask to Mask himself. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, Larry. Oh, I didn't look at Godot's description. The prosecutor is shrouded in mystery. Not really, I'm pretty sure I know who he is. He seems to know me somehow. I guess he would know through Maya? 
I guess he would know him as the defendant, maybe? I'm not sure why he personally has a grudge yet. I'll, I'll, I'll let it brew a little, chat, to do the coffee pun. I'll think about it in more detail, why he blames Phoenix for something specifically. I'm sure it's partially a misunderstanding, of course. Anyway, picked up Ron Delight's wallet while working on the day of the crime. Let's present it. Take that! Who is this useless looking young man? Judge, you've seen him in front of the court like twice. You don't remember him, Your Honor. Hmm, not exactly. Yeah, Judge has gone senile again, chat. But just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my throat. Damn. That's a sick burn from the, t from the uh, judge. Looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. I mean, the case. He was involved in more than one case. He probably blocked out that memory on purpose. No, I think he just forgot. Anyway, this man was working at a, as a guard at KV Security that night. Oh? The question at hand is this key card. Yep, he's saying that goes to the CEO office, leaves a record. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to discover the truth simply by analyzing this card's data. More coffee chat. Oh, he spit it out. Blah. He took physical damage there. Oh, fade to white? We got through the first day of trial. Nice. Well, Mr. Godot, the name of the CEO of KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but oh, he's super dead. Never mind. <laughs> Chat, he's still not being contacted a couple days later. He's on vacation earlier, according to Larry. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he's flying high with the angels right now, chat. I got the keycard data here. So, so what does it show? Each keycard has its own serial number. And they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at See, I'm seeing 1am as I am, and I'm not going to be able to un unsee that. This card, we'll say the card was used at Ami chat, <laughs> or Amy, on the morning of the crime. The card update in the court record, CEO office key, found in Rob's wallet, used on October 12th, night of the crime at 1am. But that means it can't be Mr. Delight dressed as Master Mask in this photo. <laughs> I used that Ami o'clock, exactly. Ah. <sighs> Looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even enough time to brew a good cup of joe. He's very coffee obsessed. So, so then. Ron Delight was clearly in the office of KB Security's CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be mask to mask. But didn't you just say in court a moment ago you were going to let him go to jail? Isn't that kind of a problem for you? Good job, you did it, Nick. Let's just ignore what was said earlier, I guess. You could say anything in court. It's like a it's like a wild west out here. <laughs> Which actually makes sense, because there was that one guy with the cowboy hat and the sheriff badge in the first game. Bang. That's enough. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Oh no, he's gone so senile he's repeating himself. Besmirching him with the title of thief. Well, what's wrong, your honor? I'm ready to pass judgment, but before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, your honor. Hmm. Uh. Very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, not guilty. There we go. Confetti chat. Bang. Court is now adjourned. Oh. We had, but, but wait, we had a find it. Wait, we had a finding and we're still going with the case? Or is it because there's going to be a murder and technically the case continues? 
October 13th, 2.24 p.m. Just record defendant lobby number four. I guess that's the first time we've ever finished a case early in one trial sitting. Outside of the first case. But I have a feeling it's not done. Nick, you did it! You were right after all! Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy. Oh, Miss Delight. I knew you could do it. I believed in you all along, Nicky boy. I don't know how I could ever repay you. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Miss Delight. I just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick! Oh, Pearls. Got a bad feeling about this. I mean, to be fair, we all get that feeling whenever Pearl shows up. Ah, who is this woman? Oh, she? She's nobody. She's just, uh... You're blushing. How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya? You should be ashamed of yourself. Wow, we got hit by Pearl? Man, we are, we are in just a super toxic, abusive relationship every day. Whether at work, at home, in, in the halls of the courtroom. Yeah, oh, she slapped me. Um, Pearly, that's called assault, and you just did that in front of two police officers. This wo- oh, excuse me. This woman is Miss Desiree Delight. She's our client's wife. <gasps> Mr. Nick. Yes? You're even worse than I thought, going behind the back of your own client. N no, you've got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Ow. Double slap. Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? We got the sacred urn back, and the thief has been caught. You're so right. And it's all thanks to Nicky Boy here. But actually, it was you, Mr. Light, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, please, you're embarrassing me. We won the case. And why does this guy still look so glum? Uh, but I am the thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I know that, and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on. Give the kids some time. He's just got a little touch of the blues. You know about that feeling... You know about feeling blue. Right, amigo? Oh, he's looking directly at us, chat. Mr. Godo, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. Just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. Maybe you should learn my name before you call me buddy. Well, playtime is over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Cain Bullard was discovered. Oh, okay. I mean, like... <laughs> Yeah, this is going about where I thought it was going. King Bullard? I've never heard that name before. Isn't that the name of the CEO of KV Security? Wait, but body? Oh no, chat. A body has been discovered. The estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. 1 a.m. on October 12th? You don't mean... That's right, amigo. The same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So then, what are you doing here? Well, well you're, you're getting his client, duh. Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or have you already forgotten about that piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out, what? On October 12th at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office. The scene of the murder. They're getting that blackmail letter. Must have been imbrued with utter rage. What are you saying? Imbrued with rage? Come on. Don't tell me you didn't know. Rondelay was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. An employee of KB Security. What? What do you mean an employee of KB Security? Exclamation mark, question mark. What? Phoenix? What? What? But that... It... Why would he have a key card if he's not the employee? 
<laughs> Am I like hallucinating that he's been told this? I feel like I'm going crazy. Exactly, Budana. I'm beginning to think it's Terras Pharma. I, I agree, Terras Pharma did it. Looks like that alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the noose that gets him hanged. Kind of an anti-alibi. No way. He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. No, that's a lie. It can't be true. Oh, oh, but I, I am a thief, I tell you. Ron Delight, you're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't... This is impossible! Paris Farmer and Amy O'Clock with the Thinker statue, exactly. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. You've never been a coward? I feel like he definitely doesn't know us that well. Like, he claims to know us, probably from when we were first becoming a lawyer. But, like, clearly he doesn't know how cowardly, cowardly we are. We have, like, the deepest yellow streak. It's ridiculous. We got no spine. We're flopping like a fish kind of thing. Mr. Nick. Just something personal between you two. I guess pale. I guess him going pale all the time would also work too. Oh well. I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least let me have some fun while I'm here. Hmm. This guy, who the heck is he? He may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. We should be known as, uh, <laughs> Mr. Chicken Wright or something at this point. <laughs> Replace Phoenix, right, chat? Actually, I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. They've called him, like, the wrong bird. I feel like that would be very on point for this game. Come on, call him Chicken Wright later. I dare you. Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes. A client has been arrested for murder. Hmm... And the one who established his presence at the scene was me. Hmm. Yeah, Ronnie! Arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck's gonna happen next? Find out next time on Phoenix Wright. More investigation phase. Okay, so let's save. I guess we'll talk about how things are going. So we'll keep all of our finished saves up here, basically. So let's let let's chat a little. How do I feel this session has gone so far? I do feel like... I feel like the game foreshadowed a little too hard for me. So I think I understand where it's going. Maybe it's intended to be that way, I don't really know. But I mean, like, when you spend time from, like, a general mystery perspective and you put a lot of focus on using things like fake and copying and modus operandi, they're dropping really heavy hints that those things are not quite what they seem. So unfortunately, because there are not really other red herrings, um, it's pretty obvious who the people are involved. And I think that's kind of a problem from, like, a mystery standpoint. It's not super deep. But I guess from like a courtroom standpoint, if you play it more from the working through the evidence kind of things, I think this trial so far has been fine. There is there are a couple of phrases I was more confused at, and I think maybe some of it's like a translation thing. Some of it is more, I just haven't heard some of these phrases used that way in the intended way. 
So for me, it's a bit more confusing. So I'm hoping as we get past this particular um, detective that things will probably smooth out a little bit more. So, like, I don't really have a lot of questions when it comes to, like, what Larry Butts is saying or the other characters. But sometimes I feel like their turn of phrase is, like, a little off. And it's definitely all over the place with the references. As I said before, I'm, like, 95% certain it was Money Python being referenced and maybe Sun Tzu. We're talking about, like, to confuse your enemies, you must first confuse your allies. But, you know, it's just kind of one of those things, I guess. We'll work our way through it. But I guess so far I haven't whiffed. I don't know if I pressed more than I needed to, but I feel like we narrowed it down a little bit, so I'm not pressing literally every statement. So I think I'm doing okay. But I guess we'll see where we go with testimony. So we're probably going to be interviewing Larry. There's another character that I know is in there because of the achievement, and I wasn't sure how they tied into the case. It's going to be unfortunate. We're going to see that character next time. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, tie things up and... I guess learn more about the dead body next time. So for now, I guess we can say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point, the video or the VOD, I'd like to say thank you for watching and hope to see you again in the next part.